crazy crowd on hand in Chesapeake, Virginia, as this city once again plays host to one of the most prestigious events in the sport of pocket billiards. These are the United States Open Nine Ball Championships. Today, out of the loser's bracket, a semifinal match between Buddy Hall and Jose Parica. Remember, this is a double elimination tournament, so these two will play for the right to play Johnny Archer. Archer was a loser to Tom Kennedy, who has already won his way into the final. So Archer awaits the winner of this match between Hall and Parika. The winner of this plays Archer for the right to play Kennedy for the U.S. Open Championship. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with the three-time U.S. Open champion, Mike Siegel. And Mike, you know, they talk about parity in the NFL. I don't think that's anything compared with the parity that we're seeing these days in pocket billiards. Every week, it seems to be somebody else. That's very true. And uh, this week, we have two players that we've seen many, many times on ESPN. And we also have two players that we haven't seen. So that's going to call for an interesting contest. Tom Kennedy is already in the final, but let's talk about the match that we're going to be seeing today. Buddy Hall, first of all, a guy who's been around the track more than once. Yeah, I have a lot of experience with Buddy. He's been around many many times as you know he has tremendous cue ball control I think that's one of his biggest assets he's very methodical the way he plays the game and I know and everybody else knows that he definitely can find a way to win a match so he's going to be very dangerous let's talk about Jose Perica for a minute he's a guy who has had some experience and won a lot of tournaments he really has he's from the Philippines he's been around our tour for many many years he kind of comes in on a visa off and on uh, I think it's probably his biggest asset. He has tremendous heart. I played him numerous times in close matches. He plays very good under pressure, and he's very knowledgeable. He understands the game, so you know, Buddy's gonna have his hands filled. And on top of that, earlier in the tournament, I believe Perica did beat Buddy on the winner's side. So this may be a more of a grudge match than anything else. This is a double elimination tournament. Each man has now lost once. So for today, it's one and done. Let's take a look at the rules. It's a race to nine. The balls, of course, are shot in numerical order. The winner will break. A scratch or a foul means cue ball in hand to the other player. All the balls that go down, stay down. The push rule is in effect. We'll speak a little bit more of that. And something that can be a factor in this match, there is a 40-second shot. Shot clock. And with that, we are set for the lag for the break. Very appreciative crowd here in Chesapeake and a knowledgeable crowd. <laughs> and Parika is the better of it. So he will break to start things here. Well, it looks like uh, Buddy is already. He's kind of concerned about the break. You know, normally what happens is a lot of times in nine ball matches, not only playing a race of nine, in the beginning, the first two or three games could set the pace of what's to come. So Buddy's a little concerned about even losing the lag at this case. You made an interesting point. We were talking just before they started here, too, that this is a brand new table to both players. Exactly right. This is one of the tables uh, that was used outside, and uh, players are doing trick shots and whatever on it, and it really wasn't used in the tournament, so the cloth is fairly new. The table is going to play a little different than the tables we have been using in the tournament for the last week, so that is going to come into play as far as uh, how each player can adapt to the table the quickest. Again, that's going back to the break. Uh, the guy that gets the rhythm first uh, maybe is going to have a, a big advantage. So we are finally set to go. <laughs> Look at Jose. He's, he's funny. The little man, but I'll tell you what, he's, uh, he's big when it comes to pool. hit the ball's good. Got something down, so he will stay out there. Here's how Jose Parica got as far as this. His one loss came to the man who we mentioned earlier is already in the final, Tom Kennedy. Kennedy undefeated so far in this tournament. He's been a pro for, what, three months? Yeah, exactly. See Jose play a great shot. He positioned the cue ball in this area for the three, which is up in this area. He made a great shot on the two, and you can see the four is right in this area. He 
He made another good shot. Now, I think he drew that ball a little bit more than he would like. He's got a little bit, a little bit more angle on the four than he would like. See, he's a little concerned about the cue ball sliding way over to our left, so he's got to hit the shot pretty soft or hit it very hard to go across the table. He elected to hit it soft and hit it very good. Table seems pretty wide open for him right now. He's in a good spot. You can see the five, the orange ball. And see, he's positioning the cue tip where he would like the cue ball. The six is on the bottom rail. His problem is going to be going from the six to the seven if he pockets the five. He doesn't want to get straight on the six. Whoops, see, he, he's got a little bit of an angle. Now, he could draw or foul the cue ball. You see, the seven is way up table. Then he has to actually come back for the nine, so he wants to make sure he gets at least halfway up table to play a shot on the seven. As you can see, he elected to draw the cue ball. Perfect. <laughs> so, very good opening rack for Jose Parica. Barring the unforeseen, he will draw first blood in this match. Race to nine, remember. I hit that shot a little softer than he would like, but I'm, he's shaking his head. He doesn't like it on the opening rack. He'd rather be straighter on the nine, but I believe uh, he should get a good result here. There you have it, just like that. Absolutely no problem on the first rack for Jose Parica. He leads Buddy Hall one to nothing. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Pro Billiards Tour. I'm Barry Tompkins along with Mike Siegel. This is the U.S. Open Championship, the semifinal match. You're looking at Jose Parica. Ran the first rack. Leads Buddy Hall 1-0. Buddy Hall yet to get off the chair. Ooh. He'll Two balls off. on the break. Look, now, look where the one ball wound up. The cue ball is right next to the one. You see, he was rolling down. Now, obviously, you can see the one landed right in this area right here, and the cue ball is right next to it. So, obviously, he's got a good shot at the one. The two is near the pocket. This may set him up for another game. Again, we were talking about earlier. See, now, Buddy Hall hasn't shot yet. Realistically, there's a possibility that Parika could run nine racks. It's been, <laughs> it's been done. So, I mean, that's, that's why there's a lot of pressure in pool. The average person doesn't realize that you may never shoot again. What are we going to do for the last half hour of the show if that happens? <laughs> How's your tap dancing? Yeah, well, it, it's possible. He made a nice shot there. You notice he drew the cue ball two rails. Even though he bumped the three, he hit the two a little thicker, or actually fuller than he would like. That's why the cue ball bumped the three, but obviously it turned out all right. Now he's going to play the three in the red ball. Now I can't, really can't see the angle. He may have to go up the table and down again. That's exactly what he's doing. My, he, I don't, oh, I see what he's looking at. The nine ball, possibly. I don't know. That shot uh, looks like he can play the four in the lower right-hand portion of the screen. And he's also going to look to billiard the nine to our left. Now let's see what happens. Well, yes, there it is. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Nice call. You played this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played a few times. Yeah. That was a very, very smart play by Jose. Let's take another look at the replay on this shot. As you can see, the four and nine. You see, he plays the four, and the nine floats right into the pocket. Let's take another look at this. Well, maybe we won't take another. No, look okay, at it. we won't. We saw it. But enough. imagine it. It was. It was a a very good shot. And again. Going down to the opening lag of the break, you could see that Buddy Hall was very concerned when he lost a lag. Everybody else here sitting around thinking, well, you know, what, what could happen? And here we have a 2-0 lead and still going. And there's Buddy Hall in this one of those sports that there's nothing you can do about it except sit there. Yeah, there's, I, I really feel there's more pressure in pool than any other sport for this particular reason. In golf, bowling, any sport like that, at least you have your opportunities. Where in pool... <laughs> Another look. You don't. Okay, we are going to have another look at this. Now, here's a shot. Watch the four going the upper portion of the screen and the cue ball billiards right into the nine. Both balls. It looked like a trick shot. Of course, the <laughs> it did, really. The game is nine ball, remember, and as long as you hit the object ball, what happens after that counts. Now, Parika got good, good results from this side of the table. He's staying there. Watch. Notice the corner ball and the one went in the side, and look at this. Another clear shot at the two ball. The two ball is at the low. 
lower portion of your screen. Okay, you notice the two balls right in this area. He's got a pretty clear shot at the two. It's a shot that is not a difficult shot, but the three ball is in this area right here. That's going to be his problem. He's got to get position on the three. It's not easy. And now he could have a little bit of a problem. Well, again, he was straight on the two ball, and what happened was, you can see he was straight on the two ball. Now his problem is right here. He actually didn't get the cue ball in a position. He should have been more in this area. It was very tough position. Now he's got to try and kick, hit the rail, and hopefully either make the three or play safe. Looks like he's playing rail first. Oh, oh and he scratched. That was, that was a big break for Buddy right there. Again, going back to the two ball, even though the shot was easy, the position was very, very difficult. So now, Buddy, this is pretty nice to start with your opening shot with cue ball in hand. Of course, Buddy, I think, would rather be out fishing right now. That's, uh, <laughs> that's his, his love and mine also. He'll be doing that, I'm sure, after this tournament. So Buddy Hall knocks it in. Here's how he got to this semifinal match. His only loss, interestingly enough, was to Jose Perica, the man who he's playing. Close match. Everything else he won, and won relatively handily, except for the match with LeBron. Okay, now Buddy didn't come down on the five. He's, he's got a tough shot here. He didn't get far enough. He's going to try and, I believe, cut the five in the side. But this is no easy shot. Nice touch. Yeah, that shot looked a little easier on the camera. We're sitting up there looking. That was a nice shot. He, he came around perfect for the seven. He'll play the seven on the side. Probably draw back for the eight in the same pocket. There's really no mystery about when Buddy runs out. It's pretty much, you know, you, what you see is what you get. He, uh, he runs the balls probably as good as anybody I've ever seen. Look at the position on the nine compared to, let's say, Jose's Perica shot on the nine. And he's a guy I would think if you're playing him, you don't want to give him momentum. No, no. He, oh, you can, his, his cue ball control. Uh, Jose Perico opened the door, and Buddy Hall runs through it. Two games to one. Welcome back to the U.S. Open in Chesapeake, Virginia. Jose Perico, one rack four, earning a three-to-one lead. Then broke and ran out in rack five, stretching his lead to four-to-one. In rack six, Buddy Hall took advantage of a ball-in-hand situation and won the rack with this combination. So now we pick up the action with Jose Perica leading Buddy Hall 4-2. You know, it's really hard to believe Buddy Hall broke and didn't make the one on the side or the corner ball. He really can't believe it. And he's walking back, but now Jose Perica can obviously hit the one, the yellow ball, lowest number ball on the table, but there is no shot. He's gonna have to play some kind of a safe. As you can see, the one and the cue ball and the five are actually almost froze right in this area. So Jose is gonna look to actually hit the edge of the one and possibly either put the cue ball up table or something of this nature to, to put Buddy in a tough situation. And look what he did there. <laughs> That was pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Well, I'll tell you what. Actually, he, he made a bad shot there because Buddy can hit. He's smiling again, Buddy. Buddy can hit the lower portion of the one ball. And the cue ball, you can see he can hit the, as we're looking at the, you can see he hit the right edge of the one ball and hopefully send the cue ball in a position where he's stuck. And that's exactly what he did. Great shot. I mean, just people don't realize how tough that is. The speed of the cue ball went right around the two. If he hits the two ball, the lower ball on the, on the end rail, Perica would have had a shot at the one, but he went right around that ball and forced Perica now to go to a rail. So that was, that was a great shot. That's as much of winning or losing a game as it is. Just like in the last game, we saw how Buddy made a strategic shot. You can see the cue balls in this area behind these balls, the four and nine. The one is in this area. So Perica looks like he's gonna have to come here, but the seven is kind of in the way, so this this is not automatic. That is a tough shot. He it well. just hit it. Oh, but he scratched. Look. That's a shame. Hey, look at this. Wait a minute. I'm seeing something a little bit ahead. He's got the one. Perica, it's he actually Perica got a little bad roll there. He, he hit the one. Let's take another look at it. Now what he does is he hits the cue ball up table, comes down, 
just grazes the one and then kisses the five and scratches. That's that's a little unlucky. Uh, I think I see what you're looking at, though. You're looking ahead at the two. Yeah, ball. <laughs> the two nine, you see. My buddy's got a nice shot on the one. And you can see the two ball is on the lower portion of the screen lined up with the nine ball. So that's what he's going for. An another easy shot. You can see the two and nine are right about in this area right here. And he's sitting pretty. And hopefully he can play it in this corner pocket. This well, for three, four. That's a good look at it. There it is. Great. Look how fast, huh? Two Amazing. cheapies. And he'll take them all. And he's had no luck on the break either. Okay, let's look at the replay here. You see the two going right into the nine. Great shot. So Buddy Hall now has moved within one game in this race to nine. We'll be back. Buddy Hall, who has had very little luck on the break, trailing Jose Perica by only one game now, 4-3 in this race to nine. You know, the funny thing is when the referee, see, normally we play rack our own balls. For the televised matches, we have a referee rack them. And if the balls are even slightly apart or any little thing on the rack, it, the outcome of the rack can be devastating. So this is why, see, Buddy, again, <laughs> He made a ball that time, but he didn't make the corner ball. And the one ball, he's got a problem. Yeah. I think. He, well, he we don't have a very good angle at it from where we sit, incidentally, I should point out. Well, actually, you can see the group right up here, the one ball, the yellow ball's in the middle, the cue ball's down the table. Now, to be honest with you from right here, and actually the way Buddy's looking at it, I think there's a possibility he could actually make this. I'm not too sure. The two ball is down to the lower portion of the table, lower left portion. So the two is in a good position if he happens to make one, but he's shooting at it. So obviously there is room in there, very tight. Oh boy, he hit that good, wow. And look at this, he hit that shot extremely good, but the pockets are a little smaller than what we were used to playing. You can see he shoots the one, watch this. He hit it unbelievable. I can't believe the ball didn't go in. And now Jose Perica has the gap right in between the two balls. If you can see the cue boy's got the gap in between the five and seven to shoot directly at the one. Just like that, huh? Now wait a minute, what did he do here? Look at this. Well, he looks like he's shooting, but I'll tell you what, he, he got a little lucky there, I think, because the nine, the all strike ball looks like it's just about in the way, but obviously, boy, another inch or two up to the right, he, he wouldn't have had an easy shot. All right, well, he's got a nice shot on the three. The red ball, he's a little straighter, I believe, than he would like. You can see when he plays the two, he's hitting with a high right English. Cue ball comes off the rail. He had just enough room to get by the nine. Okay, here he wants to play the four. Here he's gonna play the four ball, which is right here. His problem is the six ball. He's gonna have to come either draw the cue ball way up table, the seven's blocking one pocket up there. So he wants to see, he came up a little short. This is a very tough shot. You can see he really wanted the cue ball in this area to play the six up in here. Now he's gonna have to cut the six in that pocket and it's not an easy shot. Well, especially as you said, little smaller pockets here. And see there it happens. is. There you go. Now, you know what the perfect example of that is? Buddy Hall would have never been in that position. You follow me? So therefore, when Buddy gets an opportunity, look at Buddy's flying around the table. He can't believe it. That's one thing about Buddy's game. When he does get an opportunity normally to run out. Now you see the shot, I explained it. The angle is very difficult. He hits the ball too full, just hits the point, misses the shot and gives Buddy an open rack here. Cuts that in nicely. I tell you, you saw Buddy Hall <laughs> jump up and stand next to Perica. Perica looked like an hors d'oeuvre next well, to him. You can see how one shot actually can turn the whole match around. And when a, a top player misses with, let's say, three, four, five balls left on the table, it gives the other player, you know, tremendous momentum and confidence. Let's see what Buddy did here. He, uh, he's got a shot at the eight. You can see he's got a shot at the eight ball, but coming back down, let's say this way for the nine or drawing straight down the table is gonna be a little difficult. Okay, hit that shot, nice. I thought it was difficult except for anybody but Buddy. You can see the speed was absolutely flawless, nice on the rail, but it's a shot that he figures to make. And if he does make it, we will be tied at four all, and there it is, Buddy Hall starting to gain a little bit of momentum in this semifinal match, much to the applause of the good folks here in Chesapeake. We'll be back.
Hi, I'm Mike Massey. I call this the ultimate trap shot. I've got to hit the one ball and make the nine. No problem. Like all you guys are, I hate that. Make a really difficult game seem very easy, and that's exactly what Buddy Hall has been doing here over the last two games, as he has made a pretty good comeback here. He's down 4-1, remember. Yeah, how quickly it changes. Now Buddy's breaking from the spot. Let's see if the right corner ball goes in. Ah, you see it went in that time. He made the corner ball. He's squeezing for a shot. He's got a shot. This is this is going to be very tough. Okay, obviously he made the corner ball, which the ball has been going in this particular pocket. Now his problem is going to be the one is here, the two nine in this area. Very difficult to get position. He's got to actually draw or foul the cue ball to come all the way down the table. There's balls in the way. This is the shot on the one is decent, but getting position is very tough. We're going to have to see what he does. He's probably going to draw the cue ball. Hopefully missing the seven, coming back and coming down for the two ball. Great shot. Look at this shot. Oh, well, you got look, look at this. That's perfect. the kind of shot. Absolutely perfect. He took a little chance. He missed the seven was the key thing, plus making the one. He grazed the three. I believe that uh, that he deserved to get anything he got there because that was a phenomenal shot. That was a big time shot by a big time player. Well, I mean, it's four, four, you know, any, they're only playing now race to five. So obviously, you know, that's why this guy is has been there many, many times. I mean, you know, Bunny Hall is 47 years old. And look how good he's still playing pool. That gives all us other players, uh, you know, we, we kind of enjoy that because I know I have many years to go myself. That was a pretty, pretty nice shot. He kind of just rolled the ball in. Okay, now he's looking at the five to see if it goes by. You can see the four ball. The purple ball is at the lower portion, the lower right-hand portion of your screen. Now, the five, the orange ball, I don't know if it goes by the nine or he wants to play a five-nine combination. We see, the, obviously, the five couldn't go by the six into this corner pocket, so I think the five must go. As you can see, the five was very tough to go in this pocket. The five has a chance of going in here. I think he's going to shoot that over the combination. Yeah, right. and he made that on the upper portion of the pocket, so that was a tough shot. Well, let's look at the replay of that shot. Now, what, look how much room there is. He just, he just, he just hit it, just cleared the nine ball. Very tough shot. He's going to play the six, draw the cue ball up table. He's absolutely perfect. All he's going to do now is play the seven, draw the cue ball towards the nine ball, a little bit to the right of how we see it. Now, they're not playing foul on all balls here. Some tournaments we do that. They're not doing that here. As you can see, he drew the cue ball down. He's got a relatively nice shot at the nine. In some of our other tournaments, a lot of times, if you touch a ball, it's actually a foul. But here, they don't play that rule. Very rarely if somebody hit a nine ball anyway. There it is. And that's for 5-4. And Buddy Hall has now won four in a row and leads for the first time in this semifinal match. The winner of this plays Johnny Archer. Wham, right yep. in. Actually got kissed in, but it was heading that way anyway. And let's see what happens here. Oh, he's got the one down, didn't he? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you the truth. He didn't want the one to go in. You can see uh, the one ball, the yellow ball, is right in front of the side pocket. You hardly can't miss it. But his problem is going to be actually the two and three in the lower portion of your table, lower left-hand portion. You can see the two balls are now. You can see the one, the yellow ball, is in this area. Easy shot. But the two and three over here are actually blocked by Buddy's arm. That's going to be a little tricky because it doesn't look like anything can go in easy there, even though the balls are near the hole. He may have to play the two and hit it into the rail, bounce off. This is a little tricky. This is very, very tricky. What actually. do you do here, Mike? Well, you know, you know, actually, the two ball doesn't have room to get by. So what I think he'll do is hit it like this, hit the two, bank it off, and play the three, actually, rail first. I believe that's what I would do here. That's exactly what he did and hit it perfect. Look at that shot. Boy, he hit that so good. You know, that's a shot that can be missed so easy. Let's take another look at this. 
He hits the two straight as it lays. The cute ball comes off the rail, just nips the three in, and absolutely perfect. The two, he didn't, if he hit it too hard, the two would have gone too far away. But now he has more problems. <laughs> he can play the two, but the four ball is way up to him. He's going to draw the cue ball and make sure he goes high enough not to snooker himself. See what happened there? He played the two. He hit it. The shot good, but he didn't come far enough for the four ball, which which the four ball is right up here, but the seven, the maroon ball, which is right in this area, is actually in front of the four. He can hit the four, but he can't make it. I believe he's going to elect to play a safe, cut the four to the side rail, and put the four maybe in the middle of the end rail and let the cue ball go down table. That was the correct shot. That was the correct shot. He let Perica hit it. As you can see, if put the four ball in a great spot, the cue ball, he would probably prefer to have the cue ball behind the nine like this, but Perica can hit the four, but it's a very tough shot. He either can bank the ball possibly to the left, lower left-hand corner pocket right where he's standing, or he could play a safe. This is where, the, again, the options of the game come in. It depends how you feel. It looks like he's going to shoot at the bank. If he makes it, he might have good position on the five, the orange ball. We're going to look at his stroke after this, okay? He, look at this. How good did he hit this ball? Oh, my God. That's about as good as you could hit how that good ball. he hit that. This is unbelievable and perfect position on the five ball. Watch how good he hits this. Probably the toughest shot he's ever made. Banks the four. It never touches a rail. Comes down and the cue ball naturally goes two rails for position. Fantastic shot. And that could have been the whole match right there. Real yeah. Sickly, you know, he's got a chance now to even things at five. That was a great, great shot. Now, he played a nice shot on the seven. He came up a little short, a little short. Now, he wanted to be a little straighter on the eight ball. This is close to the shot he had on the six that he missed prior to this wreck. He bared down on that one. Yeah, though. No said, problem. Yeah, he made that one look easy. Well, because the position was natural. The other shot actually was a little trickier cue ball control. And there it is. And that could tie things at five. So Parika just won't go away. Capacity crowd here, five all, Jose Parika and Buddy Hall. Let's talk a little bit about the stroke of Jose Parika, Mike. Okay, as you can see right here, you can see right here, he's actually in this particular picture, he's lined up exactly perfect. On the backhand right here, you gotta notice how the cue actually goes strokes. And as he strokes on the bottom, you can see his tip actually fouls upwards where a lot of the other players, they can see in that one, see how the tip comes up in here. But the one thing that they all have in common is when they foul through, you notice how the Q-tip always goes three or four inches past the spot. So that's the one thing that most of the players have in common. Uh, Jose Parika, this has been a match of streaks. Buddy Hall had won four in a row, and now Parika comes back to tie things at five. This is a, <laughs> a very interesting match so far. Wow, Parika broke those very weak, and he made a ball. He, it seemed like, you know what he did? You know, I've played Perica many times. What he does is, a lot of times what he'll do is hit the balls easy. Now you can see, you see the one, the yellow ball's up here, but his problem's gonna be the two, and I believe the two can go in this pocket over here. He's pointing to that, but this is very tough position. He's gonna have to actually draw the cue ball all the way down and stop right in that area. This is very tough to control. It's straight in. Making the shot is not that tough, but the position is devastating. Look at this. Look at this. He's going to get it. Look at this. Oh, my God. Perfect. <laughs> that, he's smiling. He, <laughs> he didn't plan to do that. He was, this is unbelievable. He was planning to go to the other side. Watch what he does. He hits the one. He draws down, comes in between the nine and two, and just touches the two. Absolutely perfect. That's... Even he was smiling on that show. Yeah, you got to walk away cocky, though, like that's exactly what you meant to do, don't you? <laughs> well, actually, see, now, he made a very bad mistake right here. He, he couldn't believe it. He tried to go around the four. He actually touched the four, and therefore, the cue ball should have been more or less out in the center of the table. This is very, a little careless. He's shaking his head. Buddy likes it. Well, now, Perique, instead of running out, Buddy may have a chance to do something because Perique is either going to play some kind of a safe or take take some kind of a wild shot. You can see the four ball and the cue ball are in this area, but there's no pocket in here. There's too many things blocked. Now, he may play a combination of the four-six, which is 
not a real good shot, or he may play a safe. Okay, he's he's playing a safety. See what he did? <laughs> that was a great safe. He actually has the cue ball behind the eight and seven. See, the thing there was, even though you can see the cue balls behind the eight and seven and the four, the purple ball is right right there, but Buddy can't hit it easily. But Buddy actually has to feel comfortable because he knows Parika probably was going to run out that rack. He's getting a shot here that possibly he may win the game. So he doesn't feel that bad yet. He hit it, and... Probably not the well, way he wanted to, huh? Well, that was a kind of a shot. Something good or bad may have happened, but I'll tell you what. Parika's got the long green, the four balls dead straight in, and the five, the orange ball sitting right here. If he just makes the four and stops, do you see the four is right in this area? It's straight in. If he makes the four, he's, he's not only has to make the four, he's got to draw the cue ball back or force an angle, which is a very, very tough shot, especially when it's 5-5. Five, five. Boy, he hit that. He hit that good. He still wound up with a very difficult shot, but he hit that four under the pressure, I think, extremely well. This is not an easy shot here. The five, he's got to play the five in the upper right-hand portion. Of the... Look how good he hit that ball. He's playing pretty solid, no question about it. I'll tell you, those two shots were unbelievable. And this six ball, now he didn't get exactly where he would like, but he'd rather have this than be safe behind the eight or the seven. Nice touch. <laughs> those shots look so easy on, on camera, but they're nerve-wracking. He's got another kind of a funny shot. He's got to play the seven. He'll just come out one rail, the center of the table, play the eight in the side. How about this rack under the circumstances? This is going to be a very interesting match. This to take the lead. And there it is. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Well played by Jose Parica. And again, a very knowledgeable crowd here at these championships as Parica now leads once again six to five. We'll be back. A reminder, this is a semifinal match wow. in the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. We're in Chesapeake, Virginia. Buddy Hall now the man at the table. <sighs> trailing Jose Parica of the Philippines. Six games to five. It's a race to nine. The winner plays Johnny Archer. And then the winner of that goes on to face the upstart in this tournament. Tom Kennedy. He cut the paint off that three. Now, Buddy, I don't even know if Buddy's going to shoot at this. He may either like to play a safe or pocket the three. It looks very tough. I think Buddy made a bad choice there. Of course, watch what happens here. Hmm. That was very tough, even to make the ball. Now, again, Buddy was worried about hitting the nine ball, the all straight ball with the cue ball. That's, again, why he overcut the three ball. So these are the things that go through players' minds. You can see the three, the red ball's over here, but his problem is going to be he's got to draw the cue ball. You can see the length of the table. This shot is very, very long. Plus, he's got to draw the cue ball for the four, which is to the bottom lower left-hand portion of our screen. So this is by no means an easy shot. Boy, he fired that in pretty nice. Came back nicely. Yeah, that was... That was a nice shot, especially if they both know that either player could run the set out from this particular point. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure out there. The team the shot looks easy on TV, but we're sitting here. That's three quarters of the length of the table. He made a nice shot. Now he's going to play the five, the orange ball. You can see he's going to play the five, the orange ball in this pocket. The six is right here. Seven's actually over here. So the balls are grouped in a nice area. He can play the five. Okay, he's going to elect to play the six on the side. He's just going to follow the cue ball a little bit. Nice shot. The angles are so important. You know, <laughs> Barry, I've seen your pool stroke. Yeah, now. I know you have. <laughs> well, he's got a little bit more angle than he like on the seven ball. Maybe he shot that in like it was nothing. Now he has the eight in the corner. The tricky shot is going to be the position. Now he has a couple different ways to do it. Looks like he's going to... Looks like he's following the cue ball. Just coming... Actually, one rail down table. And he's going to... This, is, this isn't automatic, but uh, I believe he'll make this. So he'll cut this in, and this will give him a two-game lead and put him two games. 
from reaching the next semifinal. 7-5, Jose Parica leads Buddy Hall, and there's nothing Buddy Hall can do about it at this point. Hi, I'm Alan Hopkins, and I'm here to explain a push shot. Anytime two balls are not frozen, there's a little space between them, you must elevate your cue and make the cue ball slow down after it strikes the nine ball. If you have any questions about a push shot, contact the Professional Billiards Tour or your local professional player. Was that legal? And that's why I have you, to contact my local professional. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Chesapeake Holiday Inn here in Chesapeake, Virginia, the semifinals of this U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships continue. And Jose Parica now at the table and just two games away from moving into the next round against Johnny Archer. Now that was interesting Now he Jose broke the balls. The one didn't go in the side pocket or the corner ball didn't even attempt to go in again getting back to the way the referee a lot of times racks the balls. He may have had a very very minute change not his fault but just throwing the balls up there and that that does have an outcome on how the balls react. Now Buddy has a nice shot you can see it well the cue balls actually frozen a rail but he's got a combination on the one six which really isn't easy but it's a lot better shot than than not having no shot at all. He made a nice shot there. Very nice shot. You can see his kind of leg lifted up in the air. Well, he can play the one, the yellow ball in the corner pocket. Now his problem is going to be coming down. You can see the two of the blue balls in the lower left portion of the screen. The cue ball, the speed of the cue ball has got to be good. The nine is in the way, but he hit it. Look how perfect he hit that. If if he comes down a little further, actually the nine yellow strike ball would have been in the way, but he's got perfect speed. So he can, you can see there, he's gonna play the two, just come up for the three, the red ball, which is in the upper right hand, left hand portion of the screen. Okay, again, Buddy has a perfect angle. He's a little further away from the ball than he would like. He's gonna play the three. You see the four is over. You see the four is over in the right hand portion. All right, Buddy's got a nice shot on the four. Four balls right in this area right here. He's gonna play the four. He's gonna draw the cue ball a little bit of low left English. See a good shot of it there. To come off the rail, back out for the five ball, which is all the way across table. Look at the speed of that shot. Absolutely perfect. Now again, he has another little problem. He's smiling because he's afraid the side pocket point actually in this particular case may be in the way. He's gotta actually draw the cue ball all the way back. And the seven, you can see the eight balls in the middle upper portion of the pocket. He's got to make sure he draws past the eight ball. So he's going to actually cheat the pocket. Watch the five go into the left-hand rail. Exactly. See what he did? Whoa. Look how good he hit this shot. Unbelievable. He's corner hooked. Oh, my goodness. He's corner hooked. He's right on the point of the pocket. He can't hit the seven. Look at this. That's unbelievable. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, it looked that, like he hit it perfectly, didn't it? You know what? He played the five. He drew it back. But the thing is, he didn't really cheat the pocket. Therefore, the cue ball hugged the rail a little bit more. He knew he didn't like it when he hit it. And as you can see, that is extremely unlucky. Look where that ball wound up. Boy, that's a that's a big game right there. Now he's going to actually, this is going to be a trick shot. He's going to play the cue ball off the point and try and hit the seven. Boy, is that tough. Look at this. He missed it. Boy, that's... That was, he made a great effort, but I'll tell you, that is one of, that's one of the worst rolls I've ever seen. He's actually hitting the cue ball off the point. You can see the cue ball rolling just, if he just grazed the seven there, he may not even have left an easy shot. That's how championships are won and lost. But they say baseball's a game of inches. This, that was, uh, wow, that was, well, that's the difference between seven, six, and eight, five. Yeah, that could be the difference in going on in the tournament. Yeah, that. Well, let me see. Your freak it rolled a little bit further than he'd like. This this isn't automatic. This shot is not automatic by no means. Of course, he shot it like it was. And that for an 8-5 lead and just one game away from moving on to play Johnny Archer. Hi, I'm Kim Davenport from Modesto, California. And I'm going to show you here three basic shots as the same shot to get shape on. First of all, I'm gonna make the six and come down one rail for position. Okay, that's the first way to do it. 
Same shot. I'm going to come out and go two rails off both cushions and come down for position. Now for the third shot, same position of the balls. I'm going to draw it off two rails and come down. So if you have any problems with this, please practice. It'll make your game better. Right now, Jose Parica, originally from the Philippines, he now lives in La Puente, California, within one game of moving on to the semifinals against Johnny Archer. That was a big, big game, last game. But we'll see what happens. Well, he made the corner ball that time and the one on the side. Watch out for three ball. Look out. Look at this. Wow. Now. <laughs> That's that's unbelievable. He made the one on the side. He made the corner ball. You can see the three ball is directly in line with the two, which is sitting in this area. The three was actually the last ball to roll into this spot. That is, boy, that is unbelievable. If the three would have stopped or kept going, now he's going to go to the rail. He's not even going to elect to push eyes and go to the rail and try and play rail first. Very tough shot. Look did at it. that. Wow. What a shot, huh? How good did he hit that ball? He made it look so easy. That was very, very tough. And he's got perfect position on the three, the red ball. As you can see, he's hitting the cue ball into the rail. Just hits the two. When those shots go in, they look so easy. When you miss them, you look so <laughs> foolish. Yes. That was a tough chance that he took there. He needs to stay at the table. All he needs to do is run this rack out. He made a nice shot on the three. Forced it. He got perfect position on the three, too. As you can see, he played the three. He's got the four ball right here. Now he's going to play the four in the side pocket. He's just going to slide the cue ball head very soft. Wow. Okay, now he's got, you know, I think his nerves are a little bit on end. He's got the five ball. This is not an easy shot. He's got to play the five, bounce off the rail a little bit for the seven, which is the right-hand top portion. He made it so easy. You know, these shots, he's shooting these shots. They make them look so easy, but those are tough, tough shots under the circumstances, especially playing somebody like Buddy Hole. Yeah, he's looking pretty confident right now is Parika. Okay, now what he elected to do there was actually hold the cue ball. I probably might have forced the cue ball to come around the table. Again, he's got to actually hit the cue ball very low and soft. Cut the eight in. Hit it very nice. The cue ball's going a little further than he would like. But, but he, I'm sure he'll take it. He likes it. He likes it. And this for the match. Wow. And there it is. What a match. Jose Parita has moved through to the semifinal. He will play Johnny Archer, the winner of that match. Place for the whole banana. That was some match there. Well, I would, I would like to see what happened if Buddy didn't get corner hooked on that particular ball on the seven ball. That's a terrific win for Jose Parica, and what he did for the most part was keep Buddy Hall frozen on his seat. Yeah, he really played a great match. Got out quickly, made the big shots, and had a little bit of luck too. That's what it takes. We'll be back. And we welcome you back to Chesapeake, Virginia. This, of course, the U.S. Open nine ball semifinal, which is now history. Jose Parica is the winner over Buddy Hall. Nine games to five was a brilliantly played match for Parica. He now will move on to play Johnny Archer. At the moment, the winner of this semifinal is with our own Kevin Cusick. Kev? Okay, Barry, thank you very much. Jose, first of all, congratulations. Uh, thank you. For, well, uh, my opportunity being... Uh, uh, played body hole in, in the semi-final and beat him is uh, kind of a big, uh, you know, big victory for me. Very big victory. Buddy Hall has done awfully well. He just won the Challenge of Champions. He's been playing great the last two, three years on the tour. You said you've played him the last six years on and off, and uh, you pretty much don't have trouble with Buddy Hall, as was the case again today. Yeah, uh, every time I play body, I, uh, you know, I, I get the roll, and then... It all seems that I play good against him, more open. Well, uh, the last year, last year he, he, that's his year, you know, and he beats me three in a row last year. Well, he beat you three in a row last year. This year, you'll have to contend next with Johnny Archer. He's the number one ranked player on the tour. Talk about uh, what you'll need to do to beat him. If you play like you played today against Buddy Hall, uh, you might have a certainly, you certainly might have a good shot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can't tell whoever wins, you know. Because we're just al almost uh, the same level. I mean, uh, if you miss, you know, you give me a turning point, 
maybe the, the nature of the game changed. Okay, well, Jose Perica, once again, congratulations to you. Good luck against Johnny Archer and Barry. Back to you. All right, thanks very much, Kevin. Well, it doesn't get any easier for Jose Perica. It's out of the frying pan and into the fire. He beats Buddy Hall for the second time in this event, but now he gets Johnny Archer, another experienced player and another very, very good player on the pro billiard circuit. So it'll be Archer and Perica in our next match. You heard Perica say that he had to get the opportunistic shots. This was the shot that perhaps did it more than any other. For us, that's a wrap for Kevin Cusick and Mike Siegel. I'm Barry Tompkins. We'll see you next time. events in pocket billiards these are the united states open championships in nine ball and today's match the final semifinal match and it pits two of the fine players in the game johnny archer and jose parica these two will come out of the losers bracket this is a double elimination tournament remember now for johnny archer he played tom kennedy who is already in the final he is the only one in the tournament who remains undefeated right now but archer would like to see him again hello again everybody i'm barry tompkins along with mike siegel and Mike, there is a great equality. We talked about that in the sport of pocket billiards, but some are more even than others. And the simple fact is, Johnny Archer may be just a little bit ahead of everybody else. Yeah, Johnny Archer is really, uh, his game, I mean, he's, he, his break is absolutely unbelievable. And he hits the balls probably harder than anybody else. Uh, He's young and very determined, and uh, I believe he's going to be very tough to beat in this tournament. Let's talk about the other half of this matchup today, and as we mentioned, it is a very good matchup. We talk about hot players. Archer's the hot player for the year, but maybe Jose Perica is the hot player of the moment. Well, Jose Perica and I, he's got a big advantage. You know, he's just already had a match under his belt. Uh, he beat Buddy Hall twice, myself included in that roundup, and uh, I'm sure he's got a lot of confidence. He, you know, he, he beat Buddy very decisively. I think uh, this is going to be a very close match. Well, the simple fact is the loser goes home and the winner goes on to play for the United States Open Championship. Let's talk about the rules, and they are pretty simple. It is a race to nine as opposed to 13. Balls are shot in numerical order. The winner will break every time. A scratch or a foul, a cue ball at hand to the other player. All the balls stay down regardless. The push rule is in effect, and a 40-second shot clock, which could be a factor. Very appreciative crowd here and a very knowledgeable crowd about this sport as we lag for break and Perica did it again. Yeah, Perica won the lag. Well, Johnny Archer, uh, I'm sure, uh, has thoughts just like Buddy Hall did in the previous match. You know, you like to always get like a little momentum first. Uh, the break is a very big advantage, especially in a race to nine. They cut it down for the television matches and. Uh, you know, two, three, four game lead in the beginning would be uh, very nice to have under your belt. And as we can see, Perica is breaking from his favorite side of the table. Let's watch if the corner ball, the right hand portion of your screen, the corner ball goes in or the one on the side. Okay, neither ball went in. The one, well, look at this. The one, the one actually went cross corner up in the upper right-hand portion of the screen. The corner ball didn't go, but Jose Preke has a nice shot on the two of the blue ball, which is about in the middle to the right portion of your screen. His problem is gonna be getting position on the four, which is right next to where the cue ball is right now. Oh, my mistake. I didn't even see the three ball up table. I thought that was the five. As you can see, I thought he's got a nice shot at the three, which is what he was playing position for. Now his problem is going to be the four ball, which is in this area. As you can see, the balls are very far apart. And the angle on this shot is really not exactly. It looks like he's going to have to draw this ball all the way back towards him and out again, all the way down the table. Very tough shot. Very tough shot. Did it pretty well, though. He wants a little more, doesn't he? Uh, he wanted a little more, but I believe he's in not bad of shape under the circumstances. See, he's actually, a lot of times when we try and draw the ball like that, we're afraid of miscuing. You have to cue so low and so hard. That happens many times. And if you jump the table, 
I know I have numerous times, so you're, you're always aware of that fact. Okay, made a nice shot on the four. Obviously, he's going to probably play the, I believe, the 6-9 combination, but he's a little... He's a little off angle. As you can see, the 6-9 is right here. The 6 does not have room to pass. He would rather have been over here with the cue ball to be more in line with the shot. But I believe he's going to play the 6-9 combination. Oh, oh look at that six. shot. Do you know how good he hit that ball? That's unbelievable. He hit that ball. I saw that ball go in. I would have probably rather played the combination maybe get the game over with because now he's really got problems cut out. You can see he's got a nice shot on the seven, but he's too straight. Do you see the eight is on the opposite left-hand side of the table? He's got a very little angle. He's got to hit the shot either very hard. I don't know what he's going to do, but he's got to come off that rail. See, he liked it to roll the cue ball up and settle for a much more difficult shot on the eight. So you know he's playing good. Now, a lot of times the player's playing bad, he'll try and fire the ball and come way out in the center of the table. Jose is elected to play a much tougher shot, but if he makes it, he's got an easy shot on the nine. Got it. Boy, he makes it look so easy. Those are, look, I mean, he made the six, seven, and eight. All three shots could have very easily been missed. So he's got this for 1-0 lead and picking up right where he left off in his last match against Buddy Hall. Parika runs the rack to start things. 1-0. Archer hasn't gotten off the seat yet. Welcome back to the Pro Billiards Tour. This is the United States Open Championships. We're in Chesapeake, Virginia. I'm Barry Tompkins with Mike Siegel and Kevin Cusick, and we are watching Jose Parika leading 1-0 with a break. Well, let's watch if this corner ball goes in again. And there, uh-oh. Oh, he got a little bad kiss there, but as you can see, the corner ball went in. Well, let's look at this now. Parika is a little upset because he got kissed in the pocket. That's, see, now what the rule they're playing is, now normally, any ball behind line, you see he breaks the balls, cue ball, actually, the six kicks it all the way up table, and he scratches. Now, well, the rule they're playing is it's cue ball in hand anywhere on the table, all the balls stay down. So that's a tremendous advantage for the guy that picks up the cue ball. You know, obviously, a couple balls are made, and you can put the cue ball anywhere you want. And you can see he's going to play the one. Two is right next to it. I'm looking a little further on. Now, let's look at this. He's playing the one into the five. You saw he hit it just right, so the one stayed right there. They had an easy shot on the one, and therefore led to the easy shot on the two. Now, I'm looking down here at the, and we get another shot at the lower left-hand portion of the screen, or the lower part of the table. Now, you see on the left there, the six, six, nine, and seven in this area are all kind of tied up. Now, he has an easy shot on the three, and he's got, he's going to have a nice shot on the four, which is the ball that's open, but the six, nine, and seven has to be played carefully. It looks like he can play the, after making the four, it looks like he can play the six into the nine, into the seven as you can see it there, but then he's got to make sure he comes up with a shot. So let's see what he does here now. Okay, he's going to cut the six into the nine, and hopefully what happens is the seven drops, the maroon ball, and the six stays right in front of the nine for an easy shot on the nine ball. And perfect. And he's even got a combination there. <laughs> he executed that perfectly. And there it is. Boy, that was a terrific job and quick yeah. by Johnny Archer. So Johnny Archer now is even the match at one apiece, and Archer really looking every bit the part of the champion that he is. We'll be back. We are in Chesapeake, Virginia. These are the semifinals of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. Jose Parica and Johnny Archer playing for the right to play Tom Kennedy, an upstart from the state of Florida for the championship. You can see why Johnny Archer is ranked number one. Watch this break. Look at that cue stick. <laughs> he has the most powerful break on the tour today, and... That's one of the reasons why he's number one. Also, his shot-making ability is phenomenal. Look at, look at that shot. You, you know, to be honest with you, I think I would have played safe on that shot. That's how tough that shot was. He cut it almost backwards into the corner pocket. Sets himself up nicely for the two, the blue ball. The three is right there. 
Now his concern is going to be, he can play the three, the red ball. His concern is going to be drawing the cue ball back about right where he is right in this area for the five ball. And he's hit that a little, see, too much. That's why I was saying the speed of that shot. He would have rather been out in the center of the table more like, let's say, where the seven the maroon ball is, but he didn't want to get snookered behind the eight. He's got a thin cut shot. He's got to make sure he doesn't hit the nine and hit it too hard. He had, actually hit that with a little what we call reverse English to slow the speed of the shot down. That's about as good as he could hit that shot. And now again, he's got a, a fairly difficult shot on the six. These are nice when you're 22. After that, it <laughs> <laughs> they're not so easy. Huh? Well, even uh, at 22. That was... That was not like Johnny Archer. I mean, I'm sure he, I, you know, I'll tell you the truth, he shot that a little fast. That was a very, very tough shot, and he kind of just got up. You can see he's very disappointed. He took a couple strokes, shot. He actually cuts the ball a little bit wide and misses, but that is very uncharacteristic of him. Of course, that could also be the opening game jitters. Now, Parika earlier had played a match already, and Johnny Archer, he said he, he, he's a little nervous. I saw him. He, gave it a hand wobble, meaning he's he's a little uptight, and hopefully uh, that doesn't cost him too many games. Well, Parika took advantage here, and with this, he'll take a two-to-one lead. Both players playing very up-tempo, very quickly. There it is, yeah. two-to-run. So Parika taking advantage, as he has done throughout this tournament. Welcome back to the semifinals of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. In rack four, Jose Parika made the score three to one on this combination. Then in rack five, Johnny Archer closed the gap with shots like this on the five ball and on the six ball. We now rejoin the action with Jose Parika leading 3-2 over Archer. Yeah, you know, I remember 17 years ago when we first played our U.S. Open was a cue master billiards, and now we've progressed to a gorgeous ballroom at a Holiday Inn, and uh, I think a lot of that has to do with Barry Berman, who's been running this tournament for many years, and a lot of the players really like Barry. He does a great job, and the tournament's just getting better and better every year, as you can see here. Well, Johnny Archer obviously hit that devastating break. He made a ball on the break. He's got a nice shot at the one, the yellow ball, which is right there. Even a shot like that, people don't, you know, I've seen the average players or below average players a lot of times shoot a shot like that and actually get stuck, let's say, behind the eight ball, where the shots look easy. He just got up and kind of one stroke that, but there's a lot of thought that comes into these kind of shots, and you see he's got a nice shot on the two. He can, he's going to play the two. He can follow the two down this area. The next ball he's going to play for is right here, the four, but he's really concerned about the five and nine. He wants to make sure he has a nice angle on the four to come down. And I believe he's going to play the 5-9 combination. Now you see he's got a nice angle on the four. He's going to play the four on the side. He may even elect to come down in this area and try and break the balls out. Huh. <laughs> see, he, actually, the seven was in the way he couldn't play for the combination, so he elected to draw the cue ball and break the five away from the nine. But unfortunately, he's got a... He was a little unlucky there. He didn't get a nice shot. He has a shot, but it's extremely tough. He may try and cut the five. I think he's looking at that. He's looking to cut the five. Up into the corner? No, no. No, he's going to hit it and play safe and bank it cross side. That was a good shot. Wait a minute. Still may be a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to push it, trying to get it to go. Well, that was, that was a good... That was a good percentage shot. Now, you know, a year or two ago, a young Johnny Archer may have tried to cut that ball in, and who knows what might have happened. You see the cue ball. Let's look at the cue balls behind the six. If You see he's going to bank the five. He hits it. Now it almost went in, but you can see the cue ball's actually behind the six. The five is behind the eight. If he would have made the five, he had a realistic shot on the six ball, and that was a very good what we call percentage shot. That's showing many years of experience there. Well, here we have a problem. Now, Jose Prica has to hit somewhere in this area and go like this. Hope that he can hit the five ball. This is not an easy shot because the eight's in the way and he may scratch. Yep. See, he, he hit, hit the, the eight. eight. Now, that was, it was very tough. Very tough. I think Johnny Archer is uh, kind of following Nick Varner. Looking at the replay, see, he hits the cushion. The cue ball just touches the eight. If the cue ball didn't touch the eight, I'm sure he probably would have made the five. 
That was a very, very tough situation. Johnny Archer's been chewing gum lately following, I believe, Nick Varner, who's pretty much well known for that on the pro tour. The players, uh, none of the top players really smoke, so they, when they chew gum, it kind of re releases some of their nerves, and uh, I'm doing that, and a lot of the top players now are doing Isn't that. Isn't that another part of the game that's really changing? I mean, pool historically, of course, the smoke-filled room is the cliche, and you don't see that anymore. Really, it's become a family game. We were talking about that earlier, some of the great young players that are coming up just because of that. There are so many young players, it's unbelievable. I travel around the country, do a lot of exhibitions. I see 9, 10, 11-year-old kids that are just playing unbelievable, and within three to five years from now, you're going to see a whole new uh, breed of young, good players. And wow. you're looking at a pretty good one right now, that, Johnny man? Archer. That was a very, very tough shot. We're kind of talking and not watching what's going on, but uh, he, he made a very tough shot. To tie things at three, and we'll be back. The last semifinal match before we move on to the final. Tom Kennedy awaits the winner of this match. Now, how did he break it? <laughs> Is there still balls well, left? There's only about five of them in there. <laughs> He made one, two, three, four, five. he made three balls on the break, and I believe the four ball, which is right next to the cue ball. Look at this, is funny. I love to watch this. The, <laughs> the cue ball is in like an inch away, perfect position. He can play the four, the five. The orange ball is right to the left of your screen. <laughs> He's got the five in the side. Now the six and nine is gonna be a little problem. You see the six in the lower left-hand portion of your screen, the green ball. He's got to be a little concerned here because the nine may be in the way. He, he's got to position the cue ball somewhere in this area to get a realistic shot. He's going to float right in between the balls. Mm, boy, that Ooh. was... See, that was... He really, you know, he should have got a shot there. I mean, he, I think he shot that shot, but he knew that he should have hit it better. Uh, well, he really didn't want to go behind the nine. It was a little tricky, but I think that uh, he's very displeased with this. As you can see, the six and the cue ball are right next to each other. Now, I don't think he can play anything here. Uh, he's got to try and play it safe. It's a very tough situation. I don't know. He's got so many choices here. He could try and play the nine. He may just try and play an easy safe on the six. Okay, that's what he elected to do. He's very frustrated. He really, even though it looks like it's straight in the side, there's no shot for the side pocket. That's very tough. And playing the seven ball up in the corner, again, is very tough. So this, uh, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. You can see Jose Preca is looking to play the six ball. He may look to play the six right into the seven up here, but the seven isn't hanging, so this is not an easy shot. Wow, mm, see? Not quite. Yeah, that, that was a very tough shot. He had to hit it almost that good. If he had just rode the six up the rail, he probably would have missed the ball anyway. So, like I said, that was not easy. <laughs> That was not an easy shot. As you can see, the replay cuts the six up the corner. He overcuts it just a little bit and watches. He hits the seven, but it doesn't go in. That's, that's a little unlucky. And it puts Johnny Archer back at the table now, and it puts him in the driver's seat. We're tied at three. Race to nine. Winner goes to the final. Well, well, when you're ranked number one, there is a certain luck element also involved. As good as he's going normally in a case like that, as we've seen other matches where a shot like that could turn the whole match around, it, Johnny Archer still won the game. So, you know, things are still looking good for him. Johnny Archer is now a four to three leader in this semifinal match. And Archer seemingly has everything going right now, playing in a very good rhythm. You mentioned about how strong Johnny Archer is, and you just look at him and you say, no, no chance. But I remember saying that about Chichi Rodriguez in golf, yeah. too, and there's something similar, isn't there? Now, here you can see. Now, let's look at Johnny Archer's form. You can see most of the players have the same kind of a setup. You can see in this particular case, his cue levels, actually line is actually a hair down. He grips the cue very good in this area, and his straightness with his hand looks great. Now, you can see as we stroke. Watch how he strokes. When he follows through on a shot, Watch this. He hits the ball, and the Q-tip actually goes down. There you go. You see, but he keeps the same plane. As he's stroking, when he takes the Q back, you see he takes it back. He has a little hitch in his stroke, but as he follows through, all as he follows through, all the players follow through at the same time. And you can see when they take the take it back and forth. You can see when they follow through, they always follow through correct. So Johnny Archer doing everything correctly for the past few games. It's working uh, so far now. Let's watch this break. 
Well, look how hard he hits these balls. It's actually funny. Look at this again. Okay, he made a ball in the break. Now, he has a shot at the one, which is the yellow ball right in this area. The two, the two is right next to the five in this area. Now, he's got an angle, but he's got more angle. It's very, very tough for him to slide the cue ball down in this area. So we'll see what he does. It's very, very tough. Okay, Oof. well, you look how good he hit. You know what he did there? He actually hit that shot with low inside angles, killed the cue ball. So instead of the cue ball going towards the nine yellow stripe ball, it came off sharper, still leaving himself with a tough shot on the two. This is what he settled for. Look at this. Ugh. Great shot. Boy, he makes the game look so easy. You know, I mean, he settled for a shot that most players wouldn't like to shoot. I mean, he look how look how he cuts the ball. The cue ball goes back and forth a couple of times. The two just dribbles, and it's almost a 90-degree cut. Look at that. Just trickles and never touched the rail. That's that's playing nine ball. Okay, he's got a little bit more angle on the four than he would like. You see the five. He would like to actually rather be straight around the four, but he's going to try and just hold the ball up. That was a similar stroke to the shot that he missed earlier on the six ball. Well, he's got a. Very good shot at the five. He's got the perfect angle. He can play the five, kind of bounce bounce off. Maybe put the cue ball in this area for the six in the corner. So he's he's looking pretty good. He's going to play the six. He's probably going to hit the cushion in here, bounce out this way towards the eight, which is the black ball up in the upper left-hand portion of the screen. He just hit this a little bit of low right English, bounce off the rail. And he wants to make sure he has a little angle. Okay, he's got a couple choices. He can either draw this with low right English or follow the cue ball. Let's see what he does. Okay, he's going to follow the cue ball. He can either go one or two rails. He's going elected to go one rail. And how's his speed? <laughs> Bad. I mean, look, you can just draw a straight line where the nine and the cue ball are. That's incredible. And there it is. Matt for a two-game lead, and Johnny Archer now is on a big-time roll. He leads Jose Perica 5-3. Hello, my name is Mike Siegel from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm going to try a shot called the Swerve Shot. You see the position of the balls? We're going to try and pocket the three, the red ball, and the nine, the yellow stripe ball in the same shot. Keep your eyes on the cue ball. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much. All right, not bad, though. The guy ball goes down, and uh, those things continue to amaze me. And here's another guy who's continued to amaze me, Johnny Archer, now with a two-game lead in this race to nine. That's just uh, awesome. Look at this. Whoa, four ball. Well, Johnny Archer has found where to make the corner ball from. You see the four balls right up next to the cue ball. Now, I don't know if he can hit the one to play it in this corner pocket. We're going to see he may elect to bank the one. I may not be able to hit. No, yeah, he's going to elect to bank the one. Uh, never touch the right. No problem. And perfect position on the two ball. This is just, uh, and I watch this kid play, and it's just unbelievable. Now, watch how good he hits the one, he banks it. it. The ball goes in between the five and four, never touches the rail, and he's got perfect position on the two, the blue ball, which is right in this area right here. This is a clinic right at the moment here. <laughs> it's unbelievable how good he's playing. Wait a minute. Whoa, okay, the three goes by the seven. Boy, it's a little tight. I mean, as you can see, the seven, the maroon ball looks very close. He's gonna play the three and follow the cue ball out in the center of the table for the four in the same pocket. See how good he hit that shot? He actually, he cheated the pocket. In other words, what we call that, and he actually made the ball go by the seven. He's got perfect position on the four. Look how good he's playing. And Farika, of course, can do nothing but sit. Yeah, this is uh, textbook Johnny Archer. He played the five. He's, you can see he's in great rhythm, Johnny yep. Archer. Look. I don't want to say Perica's been sitting for a long time, but he didn't have a mustache when he sat down. <laughs> well, really, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, Perica now is thinking, hopefully I shoot again. I mean, that's, you know, that's probably what's on his mind. 
Johnny Archer just makes this game look way too easy. For yeah, I was going to say, you know, looking back at the trick shots that you made, here's a guy who never has to make a You're trick exactly shot. Right. See what happens when you get older. That's that's what happens. Look, <laughs> at, look how easy. Yeah, this is good stuff here. I'll tell you, you can use this as an educational film. Johnny Archer now six games to three and not looking back. Back at Chesapeake, Virginia, I'm Barry Tompkins, along with Mike Siegel, Kevin Cusick, along. And we are watching Jose Parica, who's gotten himself back into the hunt here. Yeah, a very close match all of a sudden. Of course, the corner ball is... See, the corner ball isn't going in, but the one ball is banking long cross corner into the corner pocket. Now, again, going back to the referee. A different referee, the rack is a little different, a different outcome on the balls. So very little things really can change a match, uh, referee, any any little cue ball. A lot of times we change cue balls, and that has a big effect. Now, that was actually a very tough shot. He made a ball on the break. He made the one ball, you know, and the crowd, again, appreciates it, and it never touched the rail. That was a very, very tough shot. He's got the three, the red ball, and he, he's shooting an opposite-handed. Well, he's got a nice shot. Now, the four, the purple ball is right near the side pocket. See the fours over here, the five, the orange balls in this area. He's going to foul down. All he wants to do is play the... F he had an easy shot on the four, play the five. The cue ball's going to come across the belt in this area. Hopefully for the six, the green ball. He's following my lines. Yeah, he is. That, that was good. That? Yeah. <laughs> that was good. And your lines are crooked. So... <laughs> okay, now I guess he's just going to draw the cue ball back, just hitting the cue ball low. And he, he may play the seven. I like to play the seven either on the side, the left-hand side pocket, or in the corner. That's, that's really his choice. Okay, he elected to play it for the side. Absolutely perfect. And I'll tell you what, Jose is coming back with a message to Johnny Archer saying, hey, you know, I'm also playing in this match. Yeah, I think <laughs> he's saying don't make a mistake. This is, uh, you know, now Jose is smiling. He got a little careless on this shot. He's got the wrong angle here. And I don't know what he's doing here. I don't like the way he's bridging this. I wasn't crazy about that shot. He left himself a pretty tough shot there, a, didn't he? This is a very tough angle. Boy, he hit that shot nice. That wasn't automatic, believe me. That's a confident stroke yeah. that he had, and it moves him within one game at six games to five now. So Jose Parica, one game behind. We'll be back. Barry Tompkins with Mike Siegel. You're watching the Pro Billiards Tour. This is the United States Open Nine Ball Championships. We're in Chesapeake, Virginia, and you are watching Jose Perico, who's making a pretty big noise for a little guy here. <laughs> he sure is, boys. He's playing good. I'm really surprised at how good he is playing. Look at this. Wow. The two balls jammed in the corner pocket. Four balls four. went down. <laughs> three, one, two, three, four balls on the break. Who said he had to be big to break the balls, right? I thought break the balls is a figure of speech. Wow. This is, uh, and he's got a nice shot. Now, this is not an easy shot, but he's got a, a legitimate good shot at the one. He's going to play the one. I believe he's going to try and draw the cue ball almost three to four feet back for the two. He hit that nice. Well, he came up a little short. You see that? You see the two of the blue balls in this area. Now, the five, the next ball he wants to play is right in this area. He's got to draw the cue ball over here. He wants to... He wants to stay actually a little higher on the table, not slide. See, he elected to stay very low on the table, as I call it. He really wanted to be more up in this area to have an easier shot on the five ball. So this is a very tough shot, and he's got to play position on the seven, the room ball. He's going to play this with low left English. Probably go two rails. Look how good he hit that two rails and come out perfect speed for the seven. And you see, again, the crowd. I mean, that those shots, they look so easy, but those are tough, tough shots. Wow, I'll tell you what, this is uh, this is some match right here. Johnny Archer is lo looking a little flustered all of a sudden. And hasn't been able to get off the chair, and that's... Wow. 6-6, six, six, just like that. Jose Perica just not going away. The simple fact is, Mike, both these guys are just playing terrific. Playing. There's nobody making mistakes here. They're playing. I don't think there's... I've seen a mistake yet. They're both playing very, very good. I mean, it's, it's, it's something. And Johnny Archer, he... Uh, you know, it's, he, at this... At this particular at this particular stage, you're just hoping you shoot again. That's what it is. Both players know it. Not only playing a race to three. Another look at the five ball. Look how good he hits this low left English. Comes around, 
perfect speed for the seven ball. Just absolutely perfect. I mean, you couldn't put it any better with your hand. See, Barry, if you could position the cue ball like that, you would be on the Pro Tour. It's not, not true. <laughs> <laughs> I could hit it in with my hand and not be on the Pro Tour. I don't know if a, did a ball drop. I, didn't I heard see a lot anything. of noise. No, no. But now let's look at this. I see you ready. See, Johnny's giving a little smile. See what he's, he's giving it the head shake. What that means is. You can see the one is very tough. He's got a very tough shot on the one and the two and four, as soon as Johnny moves out of the way, you can see are tied up in this area. So it's not a realistic, easy, what we call, you know, good opportunity. Johnny Archer not only has a tough shot on the one, but he probably can't run out. And, you know, he's been missing that shot. I saw him in another match and earlier, he's been overcutting that particular angle. And that, he, missed, he missed that shot in the match that he lost to Tom Kennedy. Exactly right. That's a shot. Now, see, cut it, and what he's doing is just overcutting the ball a fraction of an inch and therefore missing the shot. Actually, if the ball grazes the rail, has a much better chance of going in. He knows that. But sometimes in a tournament, you find yourself shooting certain shots a certain way, and it's very tough to overcome. But, of course, he, he really didn't give up too much. Now, Perica, Jose has a a bank probably at the one ball. He may try and cut it in, but it's very tough. He's elected to play safe, very smart. But, uh-oh, Jose, Jose made a very poor shot. Jose made a poor shot. Now, he elected to play safe, but he let Johnny hit the one, the yellow ball, and Johnny Archer actually has a, has a good opportunity to snooker or hook. Jose Perica right back, hitting the one and staying behind the seven, eight. Now watch this. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is he took the jump out of play. If he left the cue ball three or four or five inches behind the eight ball, actually you might be able to jump over the balls, but when you freeze the cue ball, as you can see right on the eight, there's no way to jump over and hit the one, which is in this position. Not only that, the one ball is now in a position where the two, four breakout is possible, so Jose must hit the one. If he doesn't, it's cue ball in hand. And we know what that scenario usually is. Oh, Look yeah. at this. Ah. And scratched on it. Oh, that's that was tough. That was very tough. And he actually, well, he, I'll tell you, he put the one in actually, a, I believe, a better spot. Here's what happens. He hits the rail, hits the, the wrong side of the one is what happened, and billiards the cue ball right in the pocket. If he would have hit the one any other way, it wouldn't have scratched and probably would have left Johnny Archer safe. Now, Johnny Archer is going to play a very tough shot here. He's going to play the one, draw back, and try and... You see the one? He's going he's to play the one in the corner. He's going to try and draw the cue ball right back, hopefully bump the four over here and get a nice shot at the two in this pocket. Very, very tricky shot. <laughs> did I say it was tricky? How good did he hit that ball? Huh? I mean, look how they're lined up now. Look at the two, three, and four go right in that pocket. That was by no means an easy shot. I mean, he made it look so easy. That was, under the circumstances, 6-6, six, six, I'd say he made an incredible shot there. You see the three and four easily go in that pocket. Nice setup. Even the speed of the shot, if you'd hit it harder, the four may have tied up on maybe the three or the two or whatever. Eh. He just executed that. Well, he's number one. I guess he's supposed to do that. <laughs> and it makes it look so easy, and I know that's almost a cliche in this sport, but... Yeah, well, that's... There's people just don't realize how tough this game. I'm sure the, some of the viewers have played pool before, and people cannot realize how tough, especially nine ball. Because, see, in this particular case, let's say in, in, in any other game, you could play any ball you would like. In nine ball, you must play the one, you must play the two, you must play the three, so therefore you're only limited to one ball at a time. And the top players, they just make it look so easy. Uh, everybody goes out and thinks, well, let's just see what happens. And they, you know, they find out it's more difficult than it looks. It's just, it uh, looks pretty routine for Johnny Archer. Even at 6'6", six, six, under the pressure, it's unbelievable. Look at nice straight and shot in the nine again. You know, the great irony and thing that strikes me is that Tariqa actually may be playing better in this match than he did in yeah. his last semifinal yeah, match against Cody right. Hall. And he has not, re he made a little, careless mistake there if you're really looking at a crucial as far as leaving Johnny Archer to hit the one when Archer came back with the safe and therefore that may cost him the match. I mean, if you look back, Archer may run, let's say, two racks and out. So these little minute things, but as far as pocketing balls, he's playing fantastic. So the crowd just kind of sitting back now and watching Johnny Archer and, and I'm sure watching with a little bit of awe. <laughs> He's, uh... Of course, I haven't seen any awe in here. <laughs> wow. Now, that was... 
That was very careless. Look what he did. That was that was extremely careless. And he, you know, normally he breaks the ball, so it's a one pretty solid. And they noticed he scratched on the break. And look at this. Look how fast this may change. I hate to say it, but television could have caused that. You know, well, we make these players wait while we're in commercial breaks yeah, sometimes. Yeah, your rhythm kind of changes. Look. Wow. See how fast? I mean, th that fast. Wham. This is, I'll tell you, pool, pool is exciting. Uh, you know, I, I've been playing 25 years. I've watched it. And there's only one thing you can predict about pool is it's unpredictable. That's it, yeah. So just like that, Jose Perica. And he's smiling again. I mean, it's, you know, it, it kind of goes back and forth. 7-7, seven, seven, Perica and Archer back with the conclusion of this, right after this. Hi, I'm Johnny Archer. I'm here today to demonstrate how to shoot from off the rail when the cue ball is frozen. What you don't want to do, you don't want to lift your cue up in the air. You just want to keep it level and straight, stroke straight through the shot. Jose Parica now at 7-7. Seven, seven. Is this a big break? <laughs> well, Johnny Archer now is praying that he just gets out of the chair again. I'm sure we'll see what happens. Of course, Jose has been getting tremendous results. He made a ball. Look at that one almost went in. He made one and, oops, here we go. Well, he made a ball on the break. He's got the, actually, the first shot, but I believe the five, the orange ball, once we get it, you watch this break. The foot, you know he had hit him good, the foot came on flying there. That's right. And some body English on top of it, and more. Wow. Actually, he must have a shot at the one ball. This is a very, very tough cut. He's going to cut into the right-hand upper portion of your pocket. Remember when I was talking earlier? He does that as good as anybody I've ever seen. Consistently make tough shots in this point of the match. I mean, that's probably his best asset. He really plays good under the circumstances. I mean, here's a shot. This is almost a backwards cut. Look how he hits this shot. Right in the center of the pocket. It's a great shot. Uh, now, does he have a problem here on the two ball? He was shaking he his does. head. He does, because he's too straight in the two. He got a little unlucky in the three, you see, is on the opposite left-hand rail. He's going to probably play for a bank. He play, See, he was too much, too straight in the three, as you can see, is to the left-hand portion of your screen. The three is right in this area, so what he's going to do now is probably bank the three right in this side pocket, right where I covered up the cue ball. And he's got a great look at it right here. This is the whole thing. Look how good. Look, look. Oh. Got it. Boy, boy. I mean... And you know, the thing is, you only played that for one pocket. If it missed, it was over. You see the cue ball's right about where the three went. Arch Archer would have run the game. Look how he paces, actually paces the ball. Perfect. I mean, how, what can we say? He hit it absolutely perfect. He had good sh shape on the five. He's got a very good shot on the six. He's going to play the six. And the, actually, he figures to play all four balls if he does it in the same pocket. <laughs> you see, he played the six in this pocket. Seven probably going the same hole. Eight and nine. Play the six, come out. Okay, he elected to go for the angle on the seven, which is actually perfect. He'll play the seven. He's gonna play the seven. Hit it just a low. English slide to the rail. He had a little bit more angle than he would like. He'll play the eight. Just hit a high, high cue ball. Come back off the rail, play the nine in the same pocket. Oh my oh. god. And Johnny Archie, you saw it I in the background. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Now, isn't it interesting how this whole match, nobody had made a mistake. We I can't believe that. that earlier. I can't believe that. Is that, just a, that. is that just a case of thinking too far I don't ahead? know. I don't know. I mean, he had a little funny angle, but I, there's no... Actually, you know what? He thought the eight maybe might skid. Of course, he was playing Johnny Archer, too. I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> different ways you could look at that. I mean, uh, I think he just carelessly shot that ball, trying to cut it thin and go back and forth. I just maybe took his eye off the ball. I don't think it's a shot that you can really nervously miss. You see how fast Johnny Archer came wow. out of the chair? Well, again, well, a lot of things happen. So Archer leads it now 8-7. to seven. He's at the table with a chance to win the whole thing. Wow, that was a, well, obviously a big, big game. I think Parika may be just got a little careless on that shot. Uh, I just can't believe he nervously, after making all the other shots, the one, the two, I mean, the three, it was just something he probably took his eye off the ball or whatever because I looked at his face and he just, he was in utter disbelief. You can see Johnny made the one, he, one, two, three, four. He made actually two balls on the break. He made the one, the two, the blue balls up in this area. 
And the three four is tied up over here. I think he's probably going to play a safety. Hit the two cue ball right behind the three. Look at this. Wow. How good. Actually, he didn't hit that the way he wanted to, but it turned out perfect. Look where the cue ball again, the four and three. And Jose Perica is in big problems. You see, he has to hit the cushion. He's got to hit the upper cushion, the top cushion, then hit the side rail, the right-hand side rail, and hit the two and hope that he doesn't sell out a shot. Or possibly he may kick this in. I mean, you, you, you never know how good the Philippine players kick. Look at this. How good did he hit this? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're going to have a... Look at how good he hit this ball. Johnny Archer thought he had the match won, but I'll tell you what, it's a whole different ball game now. Look at this. The two is right in the pocket, as you can see. Johnny Archer knows he can't hit the ball. This, this is going to be very tough. You see the eight is actually in the way. The two is right down in here. Now, he may try and mass say around here or actually go through this little slot. You can see he may be able to hit the cushion here, hit like this, and possibly play the two in the pocket. That's what he seems to be looking at, Mike. It's very, very tough. Very tough. I don't know. This is his decision. I mean, if he makes this, I... Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. How do you like it? Oh, my God. That's one of the greatest shots I've ever seen. Look at that shot. Wow. What a shot. Look at this. He hits the rail, just misses the eight, just touches the two, and just drops the ball in the hole. What a shot. That's... Uh, Parika just... Uh, what can you say? All he can do is appreciate it. And he's got great position. The three is right in front of the hole. Now he's got a nice shot on the four. Look at that boy, Perica. He can't believe he made a he made a great kick. I mean, this is some match. <laughs> that really is, but it's a well, give was, and taketh. Yeah, and, that, uh, was, that was some shot. If Johnny Archer doesn't hit that ball, Perica maybe if he wins the game, it's tied up. You can see he's... He's got the five, the orange ball. He can play it in the side. Seven, probably go right in this corner pocket. The eight can either go in the side pocket or the corner. Johnny Archer is looking... Well, let's see what he does here. Now, I can't tell if the eight goes in the side. I guess it must. He's going to play the seven, draw the cue ball back. And if he makes this, he's going to draw the cue ball to our right-hand side rail. Okay, come off the rail a little bit. Now he wants to play this. Got to be a little careful about this shot. This isn't automatic. He doesn't like it. I can tell already. He's got to hit the shot fairly hard and draw the cue ball for the nine. Now, once in a while, these shots do bobble out. So he's a little concerned about that. Ooh, but turned out perfect. Nearly, though. Yeah, it, it happens. It happened to me earlier in this tournament. Well, here we go. He's. he's got a so nice this shot. for a shot at the championship, and there it is. Yeah. Oh, that Perica. was a great match. I mean, that was the biggest exhibition I've, I've seen in a long time. Yeah, well-played match, really, on both sides. It was just that yeah. one error by Parika and that one great shot by Johnny Archer. Other than that, both players played superbly, and yeah. Archer had the big shot when he needed it. Yeah, I mean, he, they both played They both played great. I mean, you know, you, they both... They both played great. I mean, Parika happened to make a little mistake. You see he makes the nine there. I mean, just, and he is excited. Johnny Archer is very, very excited. Well, with good reason. He beat a good player. Beat the hottest player in the well, tournament. He is going to be tough to beat in the finals. Uh, he is really going to be tough to beat. That was just a fan. There's his, his girlfriend. Shannon is yeah, her Sh name. So you can look at the nerves. Well, everybody's standing here. Yeah, it was a wonderful match. I mean, that's what this sport is all about. And I'll tell you, it's a sport that's gaining fans, and a match like that is going to gain that many more. Johnny Archer moves on into the final against Tom Kennedy. We'll be back to talk with the winner. Well, it was a wonderful semifinal match, and Johnny Archer took advantage of the one opportunity that Jose Parica gave him, and then he made the brilliant shot himself and ran it out from there. 9-7, he wins, and thus wins his way into the final. And right now, he is with Kevin Cusick. Kev? He is with me, and he is also the number one ranked player in the world, and he got lucky in this one. The score was tied 7-7, seven to seven, and Jose Perica opened up the match for you when he missed on the eight ball. Correct. Uh, I feel like I was very lucky whenever uh, when I missed the seven ball. I mean, whenever he missed the eight ball, and uh, it was just a, a luck from God. There's my reaction there. I almost tripped out of the chair when I come out, so I was lucky I didn't fall right on my face. 
Well, not only did you not fall right on your face, but you found yourself falling right into the championship here at the U.S. Open. And you'll face someone who you faced earlier in the tournament in Tommy Kennedy. You guys traveled the tour early on in your career when you were 16, or he was 16. You guys were traveling around the South together. His game has improved quite a bit, as did yours. What will you need to be, Tommy? Well, um, I need to break the balls very well, and uh, I get a few rolls, and uh, I feel like he's gonna be real tough to beat, and I feel like if I get lucky and, and uh, play well, then I, sh I could win. Your mental attitude right now has gotta be awfully good in the sense that you've won four major tournaments this year. You've been having the best year of your career. So going into the final, you must have a nice confidence level built. Yeah, um, this year has been my, my best year by far. And uh, I finally won a major tournament last year. And uh, breaking through is very tough. Uh, but uh, I feel confident, like you say, going into this final. Okay, well, once again, congratulations on your semifinal victory. Good luck in the final, and good luck down the road. Barry Tompkins, back to you. All right, thanks very much, and thanks to Johnny Archer. And so here's the way it all sets up. Archer beats Parika and gets a second chance at Tom Kennedy, his childhood pal, in the final. Archer and Kennedy will play for the United States Open nine ball championships. And Johnny Archer said that it took a little bit of luck. Well, it did take a little bit of luck, but it also took a brilliant shot like this when he knocked the two ball in. intense competition it all comes down to this the folks in chesapeake have sold this place out all week long and they will for today's final between johnny archer and tom kennedy this for the united states open nine ball championship let's take a look at how these two players got here actually what this really is is a rematch tom kennedy has played brilliantly all week long he has not lost so much as a match johnny archer actually lost to kennedy and had to come back and here we are with a rematch hello again everybody i'm barry tompkins along with mike siegel and mike let's talk about this match first of all two good guys guys playing for one of the most coveted prizes in your sport. Yeah, we got uh, two young players, um, Johnny Archer, obviously, uh, number one player, tough to beat. Tom Kennedy, I really haven't been watching too much for this game, but I know he's playing phenomenal here. He hasn't lost a match yet. He's breaking well, tremendous shot maker. This is going to be a great match. Let's talk a little bit more about Johnny Archer. He's the guy who's just won everything in sight, and he had a great semifinal match to get here. It's unbelievable. Uh, he won a close match. Yeah, again, he's ranked number one. Uh, Ever since he won the World Championship in Taipei about uh, six, seven, eight months ago, he has just been on a roll that just obviously hasn't stopped. And uh, I, I just can't believe uh, the match. You know, he's just playing so good. If things are going his way, it's just going to be a very, very tough uphill battle for Tom Kennedy. The interesting thing about Kennedy, though, as he mentioned, he's just had a breeze this week. He is known only in Florida, just been a pro for three months. But I'll tell you what, he's I not know. awed by this no, guy. No, not at all. No, in fact, is, the funny thing is they travel a lot together, and uh, Tom Kennedy is ranked number one on the Florida Mini Tour. So uh, he knows, they both know each other's game. Tom Kennedy, again, breaks incredibly hard, tremendous shot maker. All the top players know he's very capable of winning, so, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing this. And he is loose as a goose, just marching around right behind you. Let's talk about the rules in nine ball, and we'll get to it then. First of all, it is simply a race to nine, not 13, as it is in some of the preliminary rounds. The balls are shot in numerical order, one through nine. The winner breaks every time, a scratch or a foul, a cue ball's in hand to the other player. All the balls stay down, regardless whether it's a scratch or not. The push rule is in effect. We'll speak more of that at a 40-second shot clock, which in this case, I don't really think is going to be any factor at all. It has been a very appreciative crowd all week long, and they are pumped for this final. And these, without question, the two hottest players coming in here. Yeah, definitely. Flag for the break. Oh, Johnny Archer won the lag. You know, the funny thing is, Tom Kennedy, uh, he's really been a crowd pleaser. It's, I mean, the players know he's not an underdog. And it's sure in Johnny Archer's mind, he is not an underdog. But the crowd, they've never seen him before. You know, they're used to seeing Buddy Hall, Johnny Archer, this one, that one. And he's a funny, real nice kid, and the crowd is really behind him. So that's that's going to be a big play in this this particular match. And I'll tell you the other thing too: if he uses the crowd the right way, it really yeah. could be a factor because he he seems to be very good at work in the room here. And I'll tell you what: if Loose <laughs> wins billiard championships, yeah, he's loose. He is very loose, and Johnny Archer, you know, he's he's number one. But on the other hand, that sometimes it's a disadvantage, and you know, it's lonely at the top. Everybody squeezes for the underdog, so. That could be a very determining factor. Okay, Johnny Archer broke the balls. And nothing went nothing down. Nothing went. That's that's unusual. Oh, new referee. There you are again. <laughs> See, now there you go. I mean, that's now Tom Kennedy has a very, very good chance. They're already screaming in the crowd. Yeah, See there? Great. Yeah, the crowd is really behind him. I really haven't watched too much of his matches. 
but I've seen him play many times before years ago, and he is a great, great player. It's really interesting to me, you know, and I'll tell you, I do a lot of sports and a lot of different events for ESPN, and a lot of people that I work with, week in and week out, athletes, that is, could really take a cue from Tom Kennedy. He is pumped about being on national television. He just yeah. thinks it's the greatest thing that ever happened, and for him it may be. But it's really refreshing. Well, I'd really like to see his performance because he, you know, see, he got a little careless right there. See what he did? He snookered himself the nine is right in the way of the four. It doesn't seem to be bothering him, though, too much. He's going to try and play a safe. Look at this. Ooh, he almost made the eight. Nice safe. Look how that turned out. Good sequence for the first time off the chair for Tom Kennedy. When he hit the... He hit the cue ball into the rail. He hit the four up table, trying to play a safe, keeping the cue ball down table in this area. And as you can see, he got a good result. The four is actually up behind the six ball, the green ball, as soon as Johnny moves. There you are. The four is just in front of the green ball where he can hit the edge of the ball, but he really can't make it. He's going to go to the rail. Hopefully hit the four solid and stick, sending the four down table. Hit it absolutely. Johnny Archer, perfect. I mean... <laughs> Well, the thing yeah. that strikes me, Mike, about Johnny Archer, having now watched him over the course of several months, is that he just isn't likely to make that many mistakes. No, and not so at all. You have to play virtually perfect against him. Okay, now, Tom Kennedy had a shot to play even a better safe. It turned out okay. Tom Kennedy was actually trying to hit the four up table and not even touch the nine. But he happened to graze the nine. But he still left Johnny Archer in a very, very tough situation. It's a tough shot up in the corner. Looks like he's going to shoot at it. And again, this is the kind of shot that Johnny has not been hitting good all week. How did he hit it there, though? Not bad. That, <laughs> you, know how tough the, you know, a lot of times the side pocket point comes into play in that shot, and the speed was perfect, and he just shot it like it was routine. And he's got a pretty, pretty difficult angle on the five. He wants to hit it low. He shot that, and he looks very confident. See, again, Tom Kennedy. Tom Kennedy is, has never been on TV before. So we have to see as the match progresses what his capability and ability is going gonna, is gonna to wind up to be. Is he going to play good? How is he going to play? Is the camera going to bother him? All these factors uh, may determine a win or a loss. Johnny Archer is doing a textbook run. He's going to play the eight slide, the cue ball up the rail. And the speed again, <laughs> absolutely perfect. Archer played just about a perfect match in his semifinal win over yeah. Jose Peluca to get here. And Archer wins the first game of the championship match. We'll be back. Welcome back. This is the Pro Billiards Tour, the United States Open Nine Ball Championships. This is the final match, and Archer has won the first match of this final, and he now stands at the table ready to break. Oh, Johnny Archer broke. You see he made the corner balls, got a nice shot at the one. Mike, let's take a look at the route that Johnny Archer took to the final, and it was a circuitous route. <laughs> he, uh, I thought he had some close matches, but he beat some tremendous players. He beat Bustamante, another Philippine player, Hatch. Uh, he had some very, very tough, tough players. Here's another look again. He lost to Kennedy, as he you see. He lost to Kennedy. He beat Parikh, he beat Hatch, he beat Ellen Carter. All top, top players. His only loss being Kennedy. Wow. Oof. That was a little unusual. Did he just rush it? You know? I, I'm not really too sure. Uh, he, I think he got a little careless on that ball. He, as you can see, he's playing the two into the eight. Oh, I see. That was, no, that was a pretty tough shot. The eight was a little bit more off the rail. But it's still unlike Johnny uh, Archer, especially at this stage of the tournament. Mm, Tom Kennedy, is he's, look at this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lucked out. <laughs> Tom Kennedy, he's not taking any time. He's just firing at everything. You know, he tried to bank the ball, look for the cue ball. He placed it. Actually got a little lucky there. He happened to graze the edge in the nine, and you see the cue balls right behind the three, the red ball. Johnny Archer doesn't like it. So here we go. Johnny Archer must go to a cushion. He's going to hit the rail above the side pocket and try and just go right into the two. He missed nope, it. Missed Let's keep on him. Now, this is a good opportunity right now for Tom Kennedy. Now, he had a pretty good rack, the first rack. Let's see if he can you know, come back and, and hopefully win this game. 
Kennedy, as we mentioned, Mike, undefeated so far in this <laughs> double elimination tournament. He and didn't need it. Uh, he he has beat some tremendous names. Rempe, LeBron, Perica, Archer. I mean, he, Fusco, he beat uh, f out of the f six players. Five of them are world champion class players. Okay, you see he's going to play the three. He's going to draw the cue ball back a little bit. A little low right English. Hit the rail. Now you see he's got the four. The four is right about over here. The five is sitting in a good position. Seven ball, actually. All five of the balls are laying in a good position. I'll just play the four follow up a little bit for the five. Okay, he wants a little angle. He's perfect. He'll just play the five, kind of come off the rail. This is the kind of rack that he needs to get going and hopefully build up some confidence. He made a nice shot. Hit that a little bit harder than he would like. He's a little bit out of position. Now he's going to have to play the seven. He's going to hit the cue ball low right English. Oof, nice shot. Nestled it in. <laughs> that was a tough shot. Now, again, he's on the 50-yard line. This is, this is not that easy. He's got to play the eight in the side. He's going to follow the cue ball two rails around the nine. This is a, not an easy shot. Nice shot. Good speed. Crowd likes it. He's froze on the rail, but I think he'll handle this. Wow. One one. That was a big game for him. Big game. Day. Nice smiling to get. You know, it's, I think to get the nerves out and everything. Confidence builder. I don't think there's any question yeah. about it. It also brings the crowd back into the game. Really too bad for Johnny Archer because he's usually the crowd favorite. It's an unusual role for him. Tom Kennedy ties it at one. Welcome back to the Chesapeake Holiday Inn here in Chesapeake, Virginia. This is the site of the United States Open Nine Ball Championships. We're in the final match. Tom Kennedy, an upstart, three months a touring professional. Has been playing satellite tours in and about the southeast. Now he made a nice break. You see Broke made the one in the side pocket. And he's got a realistic shot at the two ball. Let's take a look at his stroke. Now, Tom Kennedy, as you can see in this area, he chokes up on the handle. A lot of players hold it back in here. And he delivers the ball straight, and he's got perfect form in this area. As he follows through, you'll watch his Q-tip actually goes up. See? It actually goes up, actually stays pretty level. He's got a phenomenal stroke, good delivery. See in the upper left-hand portion, as he takes the cue back, he's got a little hitch in there, but as he follows through, he follows through smoothly. And from this angle, you can see when he follows through, he takes the cue back three or four inches and follows through about the same. So he's got great delivery. And meanwhile, back to live action. He made the two ball, then made a, eight, the eight ball on a combination off the three, and now we'll shoot the three in. He's got a nice rack. The three is hanging. He made a great shot on the two and the three eight combination. He came a little. He, he'd like to come down a little bit more, maybe in this area. He's going to play the four. Cue ball should come out somewhere in here for the five in this corner pocket. So we'll see what happens. Looks like he may either hit that a little bit of right English, possibly. Okay, he's elected to come up one rail. That was a nice shot. Now, well, you see the. He's got a little problem. The five ball, he's going to play in the corner pocket. The six is way up in the middle of the upper portion of the screen. He's got to make sure he hits the ball hard enough to get up table and not hit the nine ball. That was, uh, he has had a little funny angle there. The natural angle would have been to go around the nine, and he didn't quite have enough angle to really follow the ball all the way up table. So that was, again, a little careless. I think he's going to probably play a safe here. Put the six down table and put the cue ball behind the seven. And I was right there, wasn't I? Yeah. Oh, Either that or he's going to bank it in the front. <laughs> <over> the <laughs> wow, what a shot. Boy, I, I oh, get boy. the feeling that safe was not in his vocabulary yeah, this week. I'm learning that immediately. What a shot he made there. This is an... That was an incredible shot. We'll have a chance to look at it in just a moment here while he tries to finish this out and take a two-to-one lead on... Wow, wow. There it is. Wow. Wow. Gutsy. Look, Look at, at this. He banks his ball. It actually jumped off the table bed right in the heart of the pocket. Perfect position. You saw the result. I'll tell you what. Tom Kennedy is here for real. He is playing good. I see the look in his face, and Johnny Archer all of a sudden is going to have his hands totally tied. Johnny, Johnny's just kind of sitting there now. Tom...
broke him. He made a ball in the break. He, of course, I don't know. I can't say anything now because uh, I think safe <laughs> is not a part of his uh, his vocabulary. You're right. But I believe in this instant, he, I think he's going to try and play safe and put the cue ball, hopefully. You see the ones in this area. He's going to try and put the cue ball somewhere over here, put the one, I would say, down in this area. See how right I was yeah, there? Yeah, there you are. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's un unbelievable. Do you see the shot he made there? Wow. Unbelievable. That was over my head. Look how thin he cuts this ball. And actually, the cue ball goes around the five and six, comes down, hits a two, and gets good position. Whew. When you're in that situation, Mike, I mean, do you ever just get the feeling, hey, I, everything's been going great for me this week. I'm just going to let it all go? Well, he... I can't really tell now. He may have snookered himself. You see the seven ball here is in the way. The three is right in this area for this pocket. I can't tell from here, but I think he may have overhit the two ball. I'll merely jump over it. He did. No, he's he's got a kick at it. That was a tough angle on the two. Look at this. Pretty nice shot right there. Cue ball's froze. Pretty nice shot right there. He killed the cue ball. Kept the, kept the, he kept the cue ball. Watch what he does. When he hits the three, make sure he hits the three solid, so therefore the cue ball stays right there, stays to the rail. Three goes up table. Hit that about as good as you could possibly hit it. Yeah, well, you know what? Actually, in, when I play in the finals, I've been in many finals, and offense is by far the best defense. I mean, another, another mistake by Johnny Archer. He's giving it the head shake. He actually was trying to hit the three and put the cue ball behind the five, six, and the three actually passed the four, where he hit the four and left Tom Kennedy a makeable shot. It's not a hanger, but he, he's got an opportunity to win the game. You see, he's got a, it's a pretty, pretty nice cut shot. He's worried about position for the four. Is he going to hit the four? Is he going to go by the four? He may bank the three. He's banking the three for position. How'd he hit it? Not a bad. <laughs> Most people probably would have cut that ball in, but to ensure the position, he banked the ball perfect position, and he's got a good shot here. He, uh, yeah, he's, he's got that look in his face. You know, the thing is that uh, nothing seems to bother Kennedy. He gets up whether he has a shot or not. There's no facial expression, no change. He just gets up, does his business. And uh, that's a, you know, that's a good attitude. He's 27 years old, but he looks like he hasn't played that much on our tour. But he has the makings of, I'm sure, if he played here, the other players are going to be a little afraid. <laughs> Another good shot. Hold on. Look at this. You know, there's another... Another factor, you know, he plays in Florida. Tables get very wet and tough and sticky, so the, any other table to him looks relatively simple. I've played in Florida many times. Those tables are very, very tough to play on because of the humidity. And he's showing a textbook run out. He's smiling. He, he loves it. You're talking to our He camera. loves it. After a 3 1 lead. And if he's a front runner, he's a pretty good front runner. Three games to one. Tom Kennedy leads race to nine for the championship. We'll be back. Back to the Pro Billiards Tour. I'm Barry Tompkins with Mike Siegel and Kevin Cusick. This is the championship match of the United States Open nine ball title. And the man at the table, Tom Kennedy, just has not looked back this whole week. And right now is no exception. See if he gets a break here. Wow. He made a bolt. Now, I can't tell you, as you can see right over, as soon as we get a look at the table, he made the two ball on the break. And it looks like he's got a shot at the one. See, the five is right over in this area. And I don't know if it's in the way of the one, the yellow ball, but obviously I don't, I don't think it is. He looks like he should know. He's got a nice clear shot at it. Great shot. Hold on, ball. See, you know, his speed has been off on a few shots, I've noticed. But, you know, again, Johnny Archer has played a match in this table. Tom Kennedy has not. So it's going to take him a game or two to get used to the table. This is a tough shot. He's got to cut it very thin. No problem. Look at this. Mm. He made a nice shot. I think he was trying to look for a little better outcome. Now, he can hit the four. The four, as you can see, is right next to the cue ball. He cuts this ball very, very thin. Look at that. <laughs> right in the center of the pocket. I don't know if he can make the four. He's playing safe. He's playing safe. Another good shot. Merely perfect. Yeah, I mean, uh, nobody's been running a 1,000 racks here, but uh, they're playing very intelligently. 
Johnny Archer, uh, he's he's concerned. I've watched this game many, many times, and it's very tough. He's going to go to the side rail. He's just going to try and hit the four. Look at this. Oh, oh my God. And that's uh, the kind of shot that will change the tide <laughs> of a match. Well, he, he didn't want to put the shot, but that that's... Uh, that's that's unbelievable is what it is. I mean, all he's really trying to do is just hit the ball. The cue ball goes up and he cuts the four in. <laughs> pretty as a picture. I mean, he knows he's not hard luck without getting a shot, but that that's still uh, now see here. Oh, Tom Kennedy, he's he's looking here uh, very patiently, but now he has to kick at the five ball again. There's a possibility this may go in a lower right hand. Oh my God! Well, now the door is really open yeah. for see, Tom Kennedy. See, you know Kennedy. what? The side pocket was a factor there. He couldn't hit actually past the side, or or he tried to hit a hair before the side pocket. That's the reason why he missed the ball. So Tom Kennedy again has a has a very good opportunity. Archer is uh, see so you can see just hit the point before the side pocket and missed the five. Okay, Tom Tom Kennedy. Looks like he's gonna follow this ball a little bit of high. No, he looks like he's drawing the ball. Hitting it low, a little bit of right English. Coming down one rail. Speed looks very good. He'll play the seven in the corner. Follow the cue ball up for the eight in the side. There it goes, going up towards the eight. It's got, it looks like he's got a nice little angle on the eight. Now he's gonna, we got a perfect shot on the eight, draw it back for the nine. And how do we like it? Not bad, for <laughs> 4-1 here. He's got a mean look on his face, boy. Yeah, he does. Right. Huh? And he puts it away, four oh. games to one. Tom Kennedy leads the number one player in the world, Johnny Archer. I'm Kim Davenport from Modesto, California, and I'm going to show you here three basic shots as the same shot to get shape on. First of all, I'm going to make the six and come down one rail for position. Okay, that's the first way to do it. Same shot, I'm going to come out and go two rails off both cushions and come down for position. Now for the third shot, same position to the balls. I'm going to draw it off two rails and come down. So if you have any problems with this, please practice. It'll make your game better. I'll tell you my biggest problem with it all, Mike, is the simple fact that I always forget to make the ball. Yeah, yeah, I can play shape pretty good, but I can't make the ball. That's, that's the thought process. Pool is... Uh... Very strenuous on the brain sometimes. <laughs> you know what's funny? Tom Kennedy is not hitting the balls hard at all, as as I know he can, but he's getting a good result. He's kind of what we call bunting the balls. You can see he made a ball on the break. Now he's got the one, the one up in this area, but his concern is over here as he's looking. The two and five are stuck together. He's got a real good shot at the one. He's either going to have to try and break the balls out or if the two possibly goes in the corner pocket. I'm not too sure exactly what he's going to do yet. Okay, he's playing position for the two in the corner pocket. Watch the speed. He hit that. Shot. He hit that. I would say about as good as you could hit it. I mean, he's in between the six. He now watch the speed of the shot. It's just incredibly plays the one a little bit of right English. The speed of the shot comes down. Absolutely perfect. If he hits a little hard, he's maybe behind the six or something. Great speed. Actually, the two goes in the side pocket. How about that? That's a great shot. Wow. He, I mean, the speed there. He picked up the speed. I was saying it earlier in a game or two. He's, he's, you know, adapted immediately to the speed of the table. He's got a nice shot. He played a three. Came up a little. He'd like to have been up a little bit more, but I think he's, uh, he's okay. He's going to play the four. He's got to hit it with a little bit of low left English. Cue ball's probably going to go two rails for the five. Nice shot. Two rails coming out for the five. He's got a nice shot on the five. All he's got to do is play the five, draw the cue ball, hit a little bit of low right English, come off the rail, play the six in the same pocket. Boy, he's got an intense look on his face. Whew. But at the end of every game, he gives a big <laughs> yeah. smile. He's just... Well, he's running out, though. He looks like a mean guy. He does, yeah. Look. Well, he's, I think he's smelling something. I mean, look at that face. Whew. 
Look at the concentration. Well, he's made a he's made good shots in this rack. He's gonna play the seven at the cue ball low. Drift down, perfect angle for the nine. And Johnny Archer is in disbelief. Yeah, it's too bad. Wow. Johnny Archer bought a ticket. He'd really be liking this because Tom Kennedy's just playing brilliantly. And he has now taken a commanding lead before an appreciative house. Five games to one. A big smile from a guy who's playing big time. We welcome you back to Chesapeake, Virginia. These are the finals of the United States Open Nine Ball Championship. It's been a week-long tournament and a long road, but an easy road for this man, Tom Kennedy. And the interesting thing is, here's a guy who's only been a pro for three months. He's been playing largely in the Southeast. Good player as a kid. A lot of players on the tour know him, but he really hasn't made a big mark until now. Here he gets in a <laughs> final against the number one player in the world. And he's handling him 6-1. And I'm sure all the other players are hoping he goes back to Florida and continues playing <laughs> right. on his own tour. Well, I'll tell you what, he made, he broke, he made two balls on the break. He's got a real good shot at the two, the blue balls on the bottom rail. Come now, he got a little careless there. That was, that was very careless. As you can see, he really wanted the cue ball more in this area to play the three in the corner, and then the four is right here for the next shot. He's actually got what we call the wrong angle, where the cue ball is going to be drifting this way. What do you think about a combination on the nine? Well, he could play a combination on the nine, but it's hard to say. It's his choice. I, I don't know. He could either play the three and try and go around the table, or he could play a combination on the nine. Now, it looks to me like he's playing a combination on the nine. Ooh. He kind of jumped up on that ball. It's the only bad stroke I really have seen him do. He didn't really take his time, but... You notice where the cue ball is. The cue ball's in a good spot. The three is way up table. He knew if he missed it, it would be an outcome like this. So therefore, it was a, what we call a semi-safe shot. See Johnny Archer shaking his head. That'll give you an idea how crucial the angles are. If, he, if the cue ball would have floated up another two or three inches, had the right angle on the three, the game probably would have been over. Well, Johnny Archer... Uh, he really doesn't have much of a shot here, and he can try and play the three, but then again, he's got a good position on the four. The four, as you can see, is in this area next to the nine. The three up here, he's shooting it. I'm not really 100% sure. Oh, look at this shot. Oh, I saw what he tried to do there. That was, that was a good attempt. He tried to actually bank the three, possibly off the four, giving it a big pocket. The four was right in the lip of the pocket. As you can see, he's gonna hit the three, try and bank the ball, and hopefully either make the four or kiss off the four but it double kissed and nothing went in. Wow, look at this shot. Here's a man that never plays safe, right? It was kind of, it was a great shot. Now, he really wasn't trying to play the nine. The nine was too far off the rail. He was trying to do exactly what he just did. Put the cube on the rail, and he is giving Johnny Archer no daylight. I mean, uh, he has, somebody told me many, many years ago, make him earn it, and that's exactly what Tom Kennedy is doing to Johnny Archer. Yeah, and it's interesting, and it's almost a role reversal, because really it's Archer who, by the course of their record, should be doing that. Uh, boy, Johnny Archer just can't, uh, well, that was a tough shot. He tried to hit the, he couldn't make the three. He tried to hit the edge of the three and hopefully come down and miss the five. Now, you can see the concern here is the four and seven in this area. Now, he's got a good shot at the three to play in this corner pocket, but the position for the four ball is gonna be very tough. Now, he may draw a way down table, either try and break him out, or let's see what happens. Oh, he just went by. I don't know if the four goes up table. He's looking at it now. It does. I don't know if it does or not. I think he was more or less playing for the four towards where the eight ball was. I think the four must go. He's shooting at it. Or is he playing safe? He's playing <laughs> the man that doesn't play safe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, that was a strategy shot. Now, see, he could have actually played a three and taken a chance and drawn into the balls or whatever. Instead, he chose to do the smart thing, draw under the two balls, hit the four in that particular case, and snooker him on the seven ball. See, he's going to hit the four ball and just stick right on the seven. That really wasn't that, that easy because the cue ball, if it moves another quarter of an inch, probably gives him a straight and shot. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh. Well, mm, wait a minute. Well, Johnny, Arch Johnny Archer can't seem to get a break. He's going to kick at the rail. You see, he kicks the rail. He hits the four. Almost looks like he made it in that pocket and almost banked one rail, but he didn't make it and gave... Tom Kennedy another opportunity. Now, I don't like this shot too much. Tom Kennedy is again on the 50-yard line. It's not easy in the right corner. It's not easy in the left corner. So there's a lot of pressure on this shot. Yeah. 
how do you hit it? Just a great you can shot. tell the pressure shots. The crowd is so knowledgeable. It was dead silent when he was shooting that ball. Now he's got to make this straight in. All he's got to do is basically stop the cue ball, or he can draw back far. But I think he'll just pretty much stop in that area. Nice shot. He's starting to get a little nervous. You can see he's, <laughs> he's following through, doesn't, but he wants to make sure they go in. Doesn't show in his game too much. No, his stick kind of elevated there a little bit. He can sense the uh, the victory, I got a feeling. He hit that perfect. Look at the speed. Look at the speed. How did he hit it? I mean, went back and forth. Perfect speed in a nine and a commanding lead. Truly remarkable performance by this young man, Tom Kennedy. See the sign saying, yay. Yay, indeed. Seven games to one. Tom Kennedy over the number one player in the world, Johnny Archer. You gotta love it. Hi, I'm Mike Massey. I call this the ultimate trap shot. I've got to hit the one ball and make the nine. Tom Kennedy doing everything right. It's not that Johnny Archer is doing so much wrong. He just hasn't no. been off the chair. After the first game, I don't think Johnny Archer has, has had a realistic shot of winning a game. I, again, I you know, Tom Kennedy is hitting the balls. Look at this. Oh, my God. Tom Kennedy is hitting the ball at just medium speed. Believe me, he can hit him much, much harder than that. He's getting a tremendous result. As you can see, he made two balls in a break. The one's up in this area. Two down here. All he's going to do is draw back a little bit. Two and three, actually, are in this area. He's got a realistic good opportunity to run out. As you can see, he's got the perfect angle to play the two. Now his concern is the nine ball. His concern is the nine ball right there. He wants to either hit the slow, roll the cue ball. There you go. Absolutely perfect. Now that, that could have been a little tricky. He could have gone by the nine or whatever. He made it look easy, but that was a little tricky. You're watching the final of the United States Open Nine Ball Championship and Tom Kennedy, three months a touring pro, undefeated all week long, playing like the champion that it appears he will soon become. Well, he, I'll tell you what, I don't like this shot. You see the five is right in this area right here and uh, the side pocket comes into play. I don't know if he's playing in the corner or not. This is a very, very tough shot. Very tough shot. Wow. I don't know how that ball went in. He slid that ball in. Well, you know what it was? He hit the shot so soft that the ball actually hit way before the pocket, but the speed of the shot caused it to go in. I'm Ooh. sure the pockets right now are looking like the Grand Canyon to him. <laughs> Another great shot. Boy, he's hitting that stroke. He, he's just, I'll tell you what, this is an exhibition that I won't ever forget. I mean, he is just playing some awesome pool. He is sensing something now, boy. This guy, he's got ice in his veins. Look, he's, he loves it when he's shooting at the nine. He looks at the camera. <laughs> he loves it. Look how good he's playing. One. Tom Kennedy, one game away from a national championship. And again, there's nothing Johnny Archer can do about it. No. Eight one for Kennedy. He'll break for the chance to win the whole thing. Don't go away. This is the Pro Billiards Tour, the finals of the United States Open Nine Ball Championship from Chesapeake, Virginia. And Tom Kennedy is not only the man of the week, the man of the moment, but he is on the doorstep now of closing this whole thing out. He's got that breakdown to a science. He keeps breaking medium speed. He made, again, three balls on the break. Well, actually, he's, he's got a very, very difficult shot on the one ball, the yellow ball. You can see the one ball's right up in this area. All he's got to do, if he does make it, the cue ball should come somewhere over here. Tough shot, but if he makes it, he's going to get position for the three, the red ball. And it could be lights out. He knows a very, very tough shot. Oh, that, <laughs> I was going to say, that was, look at this. That was a tough shot. Uh, you, you know. He knew that if he made that, he hit, might have had a good shot of running out, but that was a very, very tough shot. <laughs> he does did the same thing. He just overcuts the ball, much like Johnny Archer has been doing throughout this entire tournament. 
Gave himself a little round of applause. He's smiling. Yeah, he's played great. Yeah, yeah. He, right. And he, everybody makes mistakes here and there. And that was, again, very tough. Well, let's see what Johnny can do here, if he can capitalize. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'll tell you what, that was some shot right there. Very similar to the one that Kennedy just missed. Long way back for Johnny Archer, though, 8-1. Well, um, I know one thing. Last year, when, in fact, it was this guy playing, that Buddy Hall was actually leading 7-1 to one and came out a loser. So, uh, you know, it's not over till the fat lady sings. I know Johnny Archer is remembering that, and uh, you never know what's going to happen. Okay, he's made a nice shot on the 5. Now, he's got a little bit less angle. He's going to follow the cue ball with high left-hand English, going two rails. Up for the seven. Hit it. Good. He's got a good shot. And he's going to probably play the seven. Cut it in. Just come one rail down table towards the nine. Wait. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Wow. I think, uh, I think Johnny, uh, I think Johnny's mesmerized. I remember he threw in the towel and wow. see Tom Kennedy. I thought maybe Tom Kennedy was going to run him and grab the white towel. Wow. Well, he, uh, it just seems like uh, Tom Kennedy kind of took everything out of, uh, out of Johnny Archer. Wait, wait, it's not over with yet. Keep rolling. Uh, I'm sure Tom Kennedy loved to be straight in with this ball. Again, he's moving the chalk. Well, here we go. This is this is for the whole championship. This is it right here. Oh, that's yeah. it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he not only, not only won, he just destroyed <laughs> arguably the best player in the world. That's the that's some of the best pool I've ever seen in my entire lifetime by one individual who has never even played one time on TV under incredible pressure. Tom Kennedy is a grand U.S. Open champion. Yeah, that's a wonderful win for him. We started this whole program by saying these are two good Look guys. His, I mean, he jumped out of the... He, if they had a low ceiling, he would have hit him. Oh, remember, he's only about 5'4". Wow. I know what that feels like, and he's got to be right now the happiest person on this planet. That's a wonderful win for him, and he'd be the great yeah. player and another good guy, an old friend, actually. Yeah, they traveled together, and that may have had something to do with this match. I don't know, he maybe didn't fear Johnny as much as uh, as the rest of us, like myself, and uh, that may have come into play, but he played great pool for whatever reason. The greatest pool I've ever seen in a championship match, playing under these conditions with the number one player in the world. He didn't just beat him, he destroyed him. That's an unbelievable win for him. Remember, he's a guy who's been playing on the mini tour. I keep asking myself why he's been playing on a mini tour. The only thing I can think of is maybe he thought it was a tour for guys under 5'6". Yeah, I don't know. Thank God. I hope he, did. I hope he just stays in Florida. Yeah, I, don't I have an idea you're going to be seeing a lot more <laughs> yeah. of him. Tom Kennedy is a winner. Take a look at the camera. <laughs> hi, Mom. And hi, everybody else. Hi, world, because you're going to recognize the name soon. We cannot fault you one bit. You played a great tournament. You really didn't get to shoot in this match was the only problem for you. Yeah, uh, well, Tommy played very well. Um, he played a very great tournament, and uh, he played a good finals. And uh, the second game, I had a combination on the 2-8, on the and uh, if I'd have made it, maybe things would have been a little different. But um, I didn't make it, and, and you've seen what happened. Tommy just played a great match. He did play a great match, and he opened the door for you you went to the table and then you opened it back up for him he was on a roll and if we can take a look at the replay here this was a shot that Johnny Archer the number one ranked player you normally make yeah um, I normally make that shot but um, I kind of took my eye off of it and I wasn't real relaxed whenever I shot the shot and, and I was so far down it I don't think it mattered a whole lot because uh, it would have been hard to come back from there Johnny Archer, you made your way out of the loser bracket here into the final. Congratulations once again on a great tournament. You weren't able to close the door, but you played a great tournament. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, someone who did close the door, he came in as unseated, unranked. Tom Kennedy finds himself here in the winner's circle. Tommy, congratulations. Thanks. Take a look here at a graphic of the players you beat. You beat names like Rempe, LeBron, Parika, Archer, and then Archer again. Tommy, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm praying real hard. The Lord is on my side. Well, he's obviously listening. If we take a look here, not only uh, is he listening, but uh, your game is in great order. 
You take a look here at the six ball. You took it off the table and right down into the corner pocket. You make it look easy. You make this game look awfully easy. Well, uh, it's just a lot of practice, playing hard, praying hard, and trusting the Lord for all I do. It's great. Here's a look at the this second shot. a good shot. key shot here. Perfect high and a little bit of right-hand English. Just come right off. Kill the cue ball. You played so well. Talk about right now, though, your feelings. You come in, as I said, unranked, unseated, and you beat the players that you did. You beat all the top players on the tour, it seems, to get here to the championship. You've really got to be elated. I'm just, words can't explain how I feel right now. This is beyond me. Jim, welcome once again to Chesapeake, Virginia, and welcome to the show. You've got a check for the new champion, Tom Kennedy. I certainly do, Kevin. Thank you very much. Uh, Tom, on behalf of Brunswick Billiards and Q-Master Billiards, I'm proud to present you with the winner's check in the amount of $15,000. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I'm so happy. Thank you, Jim. I really do appreciate this. Um, just thank you to everybody. Thank you for the support. My friends and family in Florida, I appreciate everybody. They've been real loving to me, and they've done everything they could to pull me through this. And I just thank the Lord for everything he's done. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jim.